Welcome back into Weber High. Tonight we have the Weber Warriors taking on the American Four Cavemen. And Brian, how are you feeling tonight after an exciting week one? It was great to get things started. Week one's always kind of that time where you feel things out, have to work out the kinks. Week two is when you really start to see those great teams emerge. We've got two really good teams that are looking to be great tonight. Absolutely. I think Dan and Dusty had Weber at 18 and the American, Cave, American Fork Cavemen in the top five. Uh, what can we expect to see from this Weber team after that loss against Bingham last week? I think this is a team that's going to bounce back hard. It's a tough group. They're well coached under Coach Jason Anderson. And I think you're going to expect them to come out and try and set the tone with a lot of chaos tonight. Really try to disguise and confuse that American Fork uh, football team on both sides of the ball to try and jump ahead early, gain some confidence, and try and compete. Because this is a loaded caveman squad. Absolutely. And... Uh, what about on the other side of the ball, the defense? How good is this American Fork defense? Oh, it's incredible, and it's led by the highlight, all-star, four-star, however you want to call him, Hunter Clegg. He's a one-man wrecking crew out there, but there's a lot of depth on the, this def defense across the board, not just on the defensive line, but also at the linebacker and safety position as well. So it should be a great matchup tonight. Absolutely, and what about American Fork looking kind of at that region four? Obviously, you got teams like Corner Canyon, you got teams like Lone Peak. What do they need to do to compete and be one of the top teams in region four this year? Well, tonight it's all about execution, right? You're on the road, you're in a semi-hostile environment, although I'll be honest, our view is spectacular up here at Weber. And so you want to control what you can control, right? It's execution. It's limiting those mental errors. It's playing your best football when you're outside of your comfort zone so that when you roll into that region four slate you're ready to go you're not still working out the kinks on things absolutely and i have to agree man the view is beautiful up here in weber high we're going to step away take a quick break as we get ready to kick off when we come back we will have kickoff for you here on ksl sports rewind stick with us college wasn't built for me it didn't care if i had to work a double shift or if my kid had a fever Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. I want to take tests when I'm ready. I want to take courses on my time. And speed up when I know my stuff. I want a university that cares about me. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Just complete an application on your phone or computer, or... Welcome back into Weber High. We are set for kickoff here, and the game is underway. That one's going to go all the way back for a touchback, and we are going to see this electric American Fork offense take the field first. Yeah, it's a good start for the Weber defense, and we know under Coach Plume, the defensive coordinator, that they're going to try and confuse and, and create chaos up front for that American Fork offensive line. Uh, you know, Coach Mon for American Fork will have his guys as ready as possible, but we may see some early disguising and whatnot on the side of Weber just to try and get the caveman to go three and out and, and see ghosts, as our good friend Sam Darnold once said. It's going to be a fun one tonight here. We're getting ready. Uh, it's going to be American Fork who's going to come out for their first drive. It's going to be champion Edwards at QB. Getting ready for the snap here. Ball is snapped, handed off to number 28, Jacob Eardley. And he's going to get a decent pickup there. About a five-yard run from Jacob Eardley. Yeah, great job by the offensive line. It's just a simple zone play to the left. They get a nice little crease. The running back's able to slip in there for a nice five-yard gain. As we like to say, you're staying on schedule with your offense, second and short. Absolutely. We're getting ready to come in here now on a second and five. Ball on the 25-yard line for the Cavemen. Chase Edwards coming out. Jake hands it off to Eardley again. But he's going to be stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, great job there by the Weber defense. Sending the pressure from the offside, trying to get in the backfield, use their speed and their agility to get past that vaunted American Fork offensive line. And this it's a big crew up front for American Fork. They do have a very good team on the offensive line. And that one is about a one-yard loss. It's going to be a third and six on the 24-yard line for the Cavemen. Third down, big play here for the Weber defense. 
Can they stop him, or will they be able to convert the first down? It's going to be Champion Edwards. He's looking for Jacob Eardley. He gets a good run, but he's going to be brought down before the marker, and it's going to be a fourth down. Yeah, just an opportunity there to play pitch and catch, get Eardley out in space, maybe create something, a safe play call. But like we said, Weaver is well coached. They're here to play. They're trying to get an early three and out, and they did just that as we see the punt team come out on the field. Or would you risk it? Would you risk it for the biscuit tonight? Not this early. <laughs> Not this early, I'll tell you that. Punt team is coming out for the cavemen. Uh, back to punt. It looks like it's going to be number 27, Trey Roberts. The punt is away. It's a high punt. It's going to bounce at about the 40-yard line, and then it's going to be fielded there. Yeah, that punt took a weird kick in, in Weber's favor, bouncing back up against the American Fork uh, cover team. American Fork able to stop the ball before it caused too much damage, but Weber's going to have great field position here at the 42-yard line as they're already on their way without even having to run a play on offense. That ball was fielded at about the 42-yard line, and this Weber offense is going to come out with good field position to start their first drive of the night. Yeah, exciting to see this Weber offense, looking to see some big improvement after they struggled a little bit last week. It's going to be Aiden Cage under uh, at the quarterback position. That's going to be handed off to number three, Nikosi Swain. He's going to get a good run. It's going to be about a six-yard gain there, and what a – what a first run there from Swain. Yeah, great job by Swain to keep the legs driving. Initially, the hole where they're trying to go off tackle a little bit there, plugged up, spins, bounces outside, keeps the legs churning, keeps them on schedule like we talked about, second and five coming up here. And I'm excited yeah. to see, you know, if Weaver maybe takes a shot right here. They fail in some momentum, just got the three and out, favorable field position. Might be time. We'll see what, uh, we'll see what happens. Aiden Cage coming up again to lead this Weaver offense. It's going to be second and fifth to on the 47-yard line. The ball is snapped. Aiden Cage drops back. He's looking for the pass. He's going for, looked like number seven, Micah Goosey, but it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, Cage flushed out of the pocket early there, uh, or just felt the pressure early. Right tackle gave up a little too much to that edge there, like we talked about. You know, the, the stalwart, the stellar Hunter Clegg, Busting a move early, and it's really tough if you're an offensive lineman. If that defensive lineman makes that move early on, you can't get hands on him. He's able to create the pressure, causes the inter interception or uh, incompletion. Excuse me. Third and five coming up for the Weaver Warriors here on their 47 yard line, trying to get into caveman territory with this third down. Aiden Cage, there was movement on the line. That's going to be a false start. We're going back. Yeah, just a mental miscue there by the wide receiver. He's kind of far out there. Doesn't remember what the snack down is. Shake that one off, young man. You're back to third and ten now, so you're going to have to come up with something a little bit more creative. Limits your play calls here, but you know what we've seen from QB1 there for Weber is a lot of you know stout, strong presence in the pocket. He's a big kid, strong arm, so we could see something good here. It's going to be third and 10 coming up on the 42-yard line for Weber after that penalty that's going to push him back. Aiden Cage, he's going to take the snap. He's going for it, but it's going to be incomplete, and it's going to be another third and out here for Weber. does look like there is a penalty flag on the field from the white hat. We'll see what this call is. But a little screen pass there trying to get out, trying to get to the sideline, create some space there for the running back. It's going to be a roughing the passer call against the cavemen. It's going to give Weber 15 yards and a first down. Yeah, great job. Again, we talked about Aiden Carter, the quarterback there for Weber, standing in the pocket, takes the hit, is able to get 15 yards. That's the hard part about being aggressive like they were for American Fork, especially on a screen pass. It leaves you vulnerable to that kind of a call. And now Weber's in business. First down on the 42-yard line, driving into the end zone. Absolutely. Last week, they couldn't really establish the running game, but Aiden Cage went for 19 completions on 13 attempts. He's going to hand that one off to Swain, but he's going to get stuffed behind the line. Yeah, it's a great job by the American Fork defense there. Not Maybe not so much a run blitz as much a good, great read recognition there. I think that was Cale Burrows coming from the middle linebacker position to make the tattle, tackle there. 
and Weaver is now back in the hole. It's second and 12 there from the 45-yard line. The good news, they are on that opposite side of the 50, though. We're in, we're in efficiency territory. <laughs> Let's see what they are able to do here with a big second down. It's going to be Swain lining up again in the backfield. Two receivers out to the left. He's going to hand it off to Swain again, and it's going to be a nice little sweep run, but I think he was brought down at about the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Swain did a really good job there to get outside. Looks like maybe uh, one, two yards gain, maybe a no gain on that one, but he was behind the line of scrimmage when he took that fly sweep handoff, and that's a really good job of him just to get to the sideline, just to get back to the line of scrimmage when it could have been a two- or three-yard loss. Maximus Edwards of the Caveman defense reading that very well, pushing him just out of bounds, and it's going to be a third and 12 on their 45-yard line. What, what can Weaver do here to get that first down? Well, we saw it before they tried to go with a screen pass. So, obviously, right now they're going to be doing something to where they can get the ball out quickly. Let's see what they got. Aiden Cage drops back to pass, but he's going to be sacked by this very good caveman defense. But there is going to be a flag on the play. Let's see what the ref is going to call here. Yeah, I'll be very curious to see what this one is. It looks like it's there in the area of maybe defensive holding or defensive pass interference. Hard to say, but again, Cale Burroughs, number five for American Fork, coming in with a run blitz. Great job by the defense there, disguising who they were sending. There were only three down linemen. Looked like they were going to rush three, drop eight, and then they sent the middle of the backer. He's able to create a lot of pressure. This this American Fork caveman defensive line is, is I mean, they are caveman-esque in size, but they are modern men in terms of ability and agility. I'll tell you, I would not want to go up against that D-line. And it looks like it's going to give Weber – just a couple of yards here. It looks like they'll get another chance here on third down, about third and 11 from the 44-yard line. As we talked about, it looked like a defensive holding there. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens here. It's going to be Swain lining up in the backfield again. Aiden Cage in the shotgun. And we might be getting a timeout here. Referees are going to have a chat about something. Looks like they are... I'm going to let them go for it again. It's going to be third and 11 on the 44-yard line. Third down for Weber. Swain in motion. Cage takes the snap. He's looking to throw. He gets it to number 13. That's Corbin Olvord. But it's not going to be enough for a first down, and the looks like the punting's coming out again for Weber. Yeah, we see again Weber paying respects to the pressure that American Fork's able to create. Carter stems back there in the pocket, tries to invite the defense back in, but American Fork staying strong to their keys, is able to uh, limit the gain there, and the kind of wide receiver screen isn't able to get much. It's going to be a punt situation now here for Weaver. Number 88, Jace Jones is back to punt for this Weaver team to return. is going to be Jace Hole. But now it looks like we are going to time out. We're going to step away here on KSL Sports Rewind. Stick with us for more action when we return. Stop by any branch. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Test day's test day. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Just complete an application on your phone or computer or stop by any branch.
At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low rate option you prefer. And then sit back and enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have a low rate line of credit. Ready for whatever life throws at you. To learn more or start your application, visit uccu.com. Welcome back in here to Weber High. Jace Jones is back to punt on the return. It's going to be number 11, Jace Hole, after a three and out for Weber. And that's going to go roll into the end zone. It's going to be a touchback, and we're going to see the Cavemen offense take the field once again. Yeah, great punt. They're hoping to get the lob shot with the 60-degree uh, wedge there and get the bounce back, not able to do it. Punt team not able to get down and cover the – epitome of outkicking your coverage. Caveman will start out here at the 20 yard line, but not a bad offensive set for Weber. Everything being equal, this is a very tough Caveman front, and they were able to get some positive yardage there. We'll see what the Cavemen are able to do now as the offense comes back. Champion Edwards is coming out to lead this offense. He takes the snap. He's going to run for it, and he gets a good run in there. It's going to be about an eight-yard pickup there for Champion Edwards on the first down play. Yeah, Edwards calls his own number there. And, again, this big physical caveman offensive line does a great job when they're lined up one-on-one -on -one against that Weber front. Weber's going to have to give in those kinds of situations, right, those, those first, first down man-on-man -man blocking situations to be able to create on the back end with their with their disguises and their athleticism. Absolutely. Good run there from Champion Edwards. It's going to be second and fourth on the 26. It looks like it's going to be number 21, Dax Watts, with a big run, and he's going to get the first down and more. Yeah, it's a great job by Watts there. He sees the confusion and the chaos in the inside. Great job by the Weber front to undercut the offensive lineman on the trap play. Watts bounces it outside, gets the big play, and now all of a sudden American Fork has that explosive play to get the drive going. Dax Watts, he's one of those guys that was returning this year. He had a big game last week against the Roy team. And now he's looking to continue that success here tonight. Last week he had eight carries. And they're going to keep feeding Dax Watts. Champion Edwards take the snap. Pressure's coming. He's looking for Watts, but that's going to be incomplete, and another flag is thrown out on the field. Yeah, they go empty set with motion out of the backfield, and Edwards drops back, but a great job by Weber to get pressure. He throws the ball up, not really an accurate throw, just trying to get rid of it outside the pocket, but we do have a yellow hanky on the field again. It'll be interesting to see what the call is here, as Weber may have been caught holding. And it is going to go in the caveman's favor. It's going to be a holding call against the defense. It's going to set up American Fork here for a first down on about on the 47-yard line. They're in Weber territory. First and 10 coming on for the 47-yard line for the caveman. Champion Edwards again take the snap. He hands it off to Dax Watts. He's looking to run left, and he gets pushed out of bounds after a pretty good, pretty decent run there. Yeah, Watts gets pushed to the sideline, but able to lower the shoulder, get through the defender, get a positive gain there. Uh, that looks to be the most success that American Fork has had so far is Dax Watts going to the left side of this offensive line. We'll see if they keep going to the well with that one. It's going to be second and six coming up for the Cavemen. Marching into Weber territory. Weber says that there was a motion on the line, but the referee's not having that one. Offense resets here. Edwards takes the snap. Pressure's coming. He escapes it well. He's looking to throw. He gets the throw off to Jace Hull, and he might take it all the way. And he's going to get in for an American Fork touchdown. Well, it's a great job by Edwards here to avoid the pressure. He rolls out of the pocket, has two wide receivers out there in the, in the open field, throws the ball up, and we see 11 there, catch the ball. He takes it, makes a very nifty move there right before he is able to find pay dirt in the end zone. 
What a play there from the caveman. It's going to be a touchdown. They're going to be the first on the board tonight. Out comes the kicking team. It's going to be number 19, Noah Anderson, out for the PAT. 6-0 here at Weber High. Ball is snapped. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And it's going to be a 7-0 lead here for American Fork. Yeah, tough situation there for Weber. You've got Edwards in the backfield, dead to rights, not able to hold on. He's a very nifty runner, a lot of escapability to his game. As he rolls outside the pocket, that's where that coverage is bound to break down. Finds his wide receiver. American Fork on two big plays, essentially, jumps on the board 7-0 early on here at Weber High. We're going to take a step away here. Uh, when we come back, we'll have more of this first quarter action. American Fork has just taken a 7-0 lead over Weber. 527 left in this first quarter. More when we return. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Test day's test day. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. Welcome back into Weber High. Here we are getting ready to kick off again. The Cavemen have just taken a 7-0 lead over the Warriors. This one's going to go all the way back. It's going to be fielded, and he's going to get a nice little return here. Oh, and he's going to go. He's at the 40. He's at the 50, and he's going to be taken down by the kicker at about the 40-yard line. What a return. Okay, just a great job by the Weber, or by the Weber uh, kick return team there, maintaining blocks, opening up a crease down the sideline. He just had one player to beat the kicker there, not able to get it, but still, Weber getting that momentum back, back on the right side of the 50, driving into the end zone. Looks like that was Valentine, the sophomore, with a huge return. We are back in caveman territory here for the Warriors, and their offense is going to come out again to try to put some points and answer that caveman score. It's going to be Aiden Carter coming out to lead this Weber team. A little bit of a shaky drive there earlier from Weber in the sense that they got behind schedule with the penalty. We'll see what they do here. He's going to hand it off. It looks like that's Swain. Swain gets a big pickup there, almost enough for the first down. Good run there from Nikosi Swain. Yeah, just an easy off-tackle play. You see the penetration by American Fork, but Swain with that explosion, that speed, able to get by the defender in the backfield. That's a great job by the Weber offensive line to get yardage and movement. Now it's second and short. They're really cooking. Ball on the 33-yard line, second and one. The clock is rolling. Aiden Carter, excuse me. Aiden Carter is going to go under, uh, under center here. Ball is snapped, handoff to Swain again. Swain's going to get the pickup, and that's going to be enough for a first down. Yeah, enough for a first down even more. It looks like a five to a seven-yard gain. You're seeing this Weber offensive line settling into what they do best, mauling, driving guys off the ball. That explosive caveman front line is going to have to make some adjustments if they're going to keep going with that three-down front. Otherwise, Weber can do this all day. Nikosi Swain, the junior running back for this Weaver Warriors offense. He's been having a pretty good night tonight. Yeah, fun, explosive back. He's got a lot of wiggle to him, but also a great downhill runner, even for his size. Aiden Carter getting ready to take that snap. The ball is snapped. He's going he's gonna to fake it over. He's looking for number four, Brylin Parker. That ball is going to roll incomplete, but he took a big hit on that play. Yeah, a big shot, and he is still down. Looks like he's struggling to get up right now, favoring a little bit that throwing hand, and he's not going to be able to get up. The trainer's going to have to come out and take a look at him. We're going to take a step away here on KSL Sports Rewind. Stick with us for more first quarter action here from Weber High. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Test day's test day. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Just complete an application on your phone or computer or stop by any branch.
what was potentially injured uh, when he went down earlier. You can see that defender from American Fork tries to make a play on the ball, not able to get to it. Probably the best result there for, for Weaver, that the ball falls incomplete. Absolutely, and they're going to have another chance here to try to get some points on the board. It's going to be second and 10 from the 12-yard line with 2.30 left on the clock here in this first quarter. Aiden Carter takes the snap. He's going to hand it off to Swain. Swain's going to get a good little run there. He's trying to get out, but it's going to be about a four-yard gain from Swain there. Yeah, almost to the five-yard line there on the run from Swain. Sees that the middle is clogged up, but Weaver doing a good job of occupying a man. He's able to bounce outside in great vision from Swain and balance to change directions and make it into a positive gain. Looks like they're going to have about third and six here. Uh, not quite goal to go as they can still pick up the first down. Looks like they're going to change the spot. And it's going to be a third and five. Third and five on the six-yard line for this Weber Warriors offense. Big opportunity here. Carter takes the snap. Pressure's coming, and he's going to be sacked. What a play there from Hunter Clegg. And we see why he's such a highly regarded talent on his way to Stanford. Clegg just beats his man right off the ball, is able to get to Carter. Poor Aiden Carter. He's going to have visions of that one dancing in his head, and they are not sugar plum fairies, that's for sure. Hunter Clay comes up with the big stop. And it's going to be Jace Jones coming out for the field goal to try to get some points on the board for Weber. 113 left here. Kick is up. And the kick is good. The, the kick is good. It's going to be a field goal for Jace Jones, and it's going to be three points for the Weber Warriors. Great job there by the Weber offense. Took advantage of some miscues by the American Fork defense, especially a big penalty. Able to get points on the board, but that's more momentum, more confidence out there. You found some things that have worked, right? So next time around, come back to Swain. See what you can get going in the run game. Try and loosen up that American Fork defense. Uh, good effort there by Weber. Plus, shutouts off the board. That's always a good thing when it comes to this American Fork defense. Absolutely. What a drive that Weaver was putting on there. Stopped by Hunter Clegg. We're going to take a step away here for just a second here on KSL Sports Rewind. More action from this first quarter, first, first quarter when we return. Or stop by any branch. Welcome back into Weber High, where Weber had just kicked a, P, a field goal to put three points on the board. It's 7-3, Caveman leading. That's going to be a great kickoff there from Jace Jones, and it's going to go all the way back for a touchback. Yeah, Jones has a great leg there. Nice little directional kick. You know, if it falls a little short and you can tempt that Caveman uh, returner into coming out, maybe getting him in a deep spot, that's great. If not, you get the touchback. And the defense has shown that as long as they don't give it up an explosive play, they can, they can hang with this American Fork offense. The American Fork offense is coming back out for their drive. The past two drives started out with uh, run plays. We'll see if they do it again. It's going to be, it looks like Lincoln Jackson is going to take his first snap of the night. And he's going to hand it off to number 35, Lucas Segura. And that's going to be a huge run and a big pickup there for the Cavemen. Yeah, like we talked about, wanting to set the tone early. It's a nice little inside handoff. Segura able to get up field, break some tackles. A little bit of a sloppy effort there on the part of the Weber defense. Uh, something that they'll want to get collected as they try to limit this American Fort Caveman offense from crossing the 50-yard line. And right now, they're knocking on the door at the 37. Lucas Segura, what a guy, what a player um, he is for this caveman. Very good on the defensive side of the ball. Very good on the offensive side of the ball. He's lining up again in the backfield. Lincoln Jackson takes the snap. He's going to hand it off to Segura again. But this time he stopped with after about a one-yard gain. Yeah, a little bit better of an effort there from the Weaver defense. Team tackling there. Segura, a tough runner. I'm surprised we haven't seen him up until this point. He may be their change of pace back. Uh, but we'll see what happens now is, is it looks like uh, American Fork has decided to make a change there. Jacob Eardley coming back out after two runs from Segura. 
But that's going to take us into the end of the first quarter where the Cavemen are currently leading the Weaver Warriors 7-3. to three. More here on KSL Sports Rewind when we return. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low-rate option you prefer. And then sit back and enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have a low-rate line of credit. Ready for whatever life throws at you. To learn more or start your application, visit uccu.com or stop by any branch. In here to Weaver High School, starting the second quarter with the Caveman leading 7-3. to three. The Caveman offense is out. Lincoln Jackson, he's going to run it. He's going to get a pretty decent run there, escaping that pressure a little bit. Yeah, Jackson tries to get outside. He's chased down from behind by the Weaver defender. Uh, Jackson uh, coming in to, to spell Champion Edwards at quarterback. Not sure what the situation is with that there. We'll try and monitor as best as possible. But now it's third and short, and American Fork's ready to go. Lincoln Jackson getting ready to take the snap. He's trying to get the Weaver Warrior defense to jump offside there. And now they're going to make some adjustments on the line before the, play, before the ball is snapped. Jackson takes the snap. He's going to run it himself. He gets enough for the first down. He's still going. What a run there from Lincoln Jackson, and it's more than enough for that first down. Yeah, just a little misdirection up front on the offensive line, and Jackson's able to find the crease and take advantage. Keeps the leg drive going, able to pick up the first down and even more. And now all of a sudden American Fork is across the 50-yard line. We're into efficiency territory now, so we'll see what this caveman offense does. Last time it was a touchdown on a big, deep completion. Lincoln Jackson out there with Jacob Early lined up in the backfield. Jackson's going to step back to throw. Pressure's coming. He's looking over the middle. He gets it complete to number 80, Josh Andrews. And that's going to be enough for a first down. Yeah, Andrews, the big target over the middle. Jackson able to stand back there, even with the pressure coming from Weber, and complete the pass. And that's another big gain here for this American Fork offense. And there will be a flag on the play. Looks like the ball might be coming back a little bit. Oh, it's going to go against the Weaver Warriors for roughing the passer. You always have to be wary when it's the white hat throwing that hanky back in the backfield, especially at the high school level. They're looking to protect those quarterbacks as much as possible. That's a huge miscue for Weber. We'll see how stout they can stand as now American Fork is operating inside the red zone. Red zone appearance here for the American Fork cavemen. What can they do as the ball is on the 14-yard line and it's going to be another flag out on the play. Yeah, this one looks like it's going to be a dead ball. And the cavemen are moving back just a bit. And you can see that this Weaver defense has done a good job of bringing pressure from a variety of areas. They've got that American Fork offensive line a little unsettled in certain situations. Try to go with the, the deep fade to the end zone. Got to hold your water up front, fellas. It's going to be first and 15 coming up for the Cavemen offense. Ball on the 19-yard line. 7-3 is the score here. The Cavemen lead. Lincoln Jackson takes the snap. He's looking for the end zone. It's going to be incomplete, but the flags are out again. It'll be interesting to see what this call is, is that ball was clearly uncatchable out of the back of the end zone. Jackson having to throw it off his back foot. Good defense there by the Weber defenders, two guys in the area. We'll see what the call is here from, uh, from the officiating crew. Big play looking for Edwards in the end zone. The flags are out, and we will see what that call is. after that incomplete pass from Jacks, from Lincoln Jackson. It's going to be defensive holding, and it's going to go against the Cavemen. Yeah, tough call against Weber there. I'm not sure that I agree with it necessarily. Uh, seems a little ticky-tacky there as the defender, even if he had grabbed a little bit of jersey, there was no chance that the receiver was going to catch the ball. But uh, nevertheless... We'll see what the result is here as American Fork gets a gift in return for their, uh, their miscue earlier on the false start. 
First and five coming up for the Cavemen. Lincoln Jackson, he hands it off to number 21. And it's going to be a big stop there from the Warrior defense. It looks like it'll be just short of the first down as they're able to stuff Watts there at the five-yard line. If I'm American Fork, I think I'm going for it here. It's a short yardage. Like we're already a second down. What am I? I'm jumping ahead of things already. <laughs> Imagine that. Just excited out here. Excited. Curious to see what uh, American Fork does. Number 14, Jet Nelson out here. Quite a mismatch at 6-5 uh, on the edge. We'll see if they decide to throw the ball up to Jet. Lincoln Jackson takes the snap. He's going to hand it off to Watts. He's going to hand it off, and I think maybe he was stopped. No, the referees are going to say he's in. It's going to be a touchdown, Caveman. Well, it's a great effort there by Watts to keep the leg drive going, reaches across. Weber defenders are trying to pull him out of the end zone, and it's just a fight and a battle there, right? You know, a fist fight in a phone booth, and Watts is able to land the victory punch as he knocks it into the end zone. Lincoln Jackson hands it off to Dax Watts, and it's going to be a touchdown for the Cavemen. They now lead 13-3. to Noah Anderson coming out for the PAT. The ball is snapped. The kick is up, and the kick is good. The Cavemen have just taken a 14-3 lead over the Weber Warriors here at Weber High with 9-11 left to play in this second quarter. Yeah, and the clear and, and obvious swing of momentum there is the defensive holding call on an uncatchable ball, and I understand the differentiation between the rules. A very ticky-tack call, in, in my opinion, but it's able to allow the American Fork Cavemen to get into the end zone, and what else can you say about Dax Watts? He, he's shown... The ability to get outside, versatility is a power runner up the middle, gets the touchdown and puts the American Fork Caveman up 14-3. 9-11 left here in the second quarter. We're going to take a step away. Stick with us here on KSL Sports Rewind for more action when we return. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Or if my kid had a fever. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. I want to take tests when I'm ready. I want to take courses on my time. And speed up when I know my stuff. I want a university that cares about me. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. Welcome back in here to Weber High, where the Cavemen have just taken a 14-3 lead over the Weber Warriors. 9-11 left here in the second quarter. The kick is up, and it's going to be Weber fielding it. And the last time they put out a pretty good return, but this time they're going to be stopped behind the 25-yard line. Yeah, Moa takes that almost at the goal line, about two yards removed. Able to get upfield a little bit. American Fork defender closes quickly, lays a pretty good hit, but Moa pops back up. And Weaver has decent field position now starting at the 22-yard line. Celesi Moa, the freshman, with the return there. And we're going to get another chance to see this Weber Warrior offense coming out to try to answer after the caveman put one in the, put one in the end zone. That's going to be a run for the Warriors. Looks like it was about a two-yard gain there from number 31, Austin Gussie, the junior. Yeah, Gussie comes out and, and setting the tone there. Three-yard gain, you're still on schedule, right? Three, four yards, every single, every single opportunity gets you a first down. Uh, we'll see if Weber sticks to the game plan with that one, or maybe they're going to test out Aiden Carter's arm, see if he has a little bit more velocity after, uh, after working out some numbness. Carter takes the snap, and there, he's dropping back to pass, but he's going to run, but he passes. He tries to get it off, looking for Moa, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, it's a great job by Carter to avoid the rush, sets up in the pocket, able to get at least somewhat on platform, put some zip under that ball. Moa just not able to run underneath it. Uh, just a little bit outside of his, his speedy 
reach there. And now Weber stares down the barrel of a third and long, third and seven here from the 25-yard line. Celesi Moa, the freshman who had a fantastic game last week, he went, he had six receptions for 108 yards, and he's looking to continue and build off of that tonight here against the Cavemen. But that one just went a little incomplete for Moa. It's going to be third and seven on the 25-yard line for the Weber Warrior offense. Carter dropping back to pass. The pressure's coming. He gets out of it, but that ball is going to be incomplete, and it's going to be a fourth down. Yeah, and once again, we see Hunter Clegg just setting the right tackle there up for, for failure, in essence, able to get by him. Carter does a good job moving in the pocket. It feels the pressure as Clegg sticks with it, even after he's run around outside of him. May have gotten a hand on the ball there. Carter not able to deliver it. Receiver not able to receive it. And we're fourth down, and it looks like the punt team is out there for Weber. Jace Jones coming out to punt this one away. Jace Hole back to return for the Cavemen. Ball is snapped. The punt is away. It's going to be fielded at about, or called for a fair catch. Oh, and there's going to be a flag on the play. Yeah, fair caught there at about the 39, maybe the 40-yard line. Great kick by Jace Jones. He's been very impressive in his kicking and his punting duties. But then there's a penalty flag. We'll see what the call is. I don't think it looks good for Weber here. Looks like that was going to be called against number 28, Tyson Higgs. We'll see what the call is. But it looks like it's going to move the Warriors' defense a little bit back. It's going to give the American Fork offense an extra 15 yards, and they're going to come back out for this drive in Weber Warrior territory. Yeah, starting out in the 45-yard line, it's a tough break there for Weber. Trying to stay competitive, just boiled over a little bit. We'll see what happens here as, as American Fork already in Weber territory. Lincoln Jackson back out to lead this offense. He takes the snap. He's dropping back. He wants to go deep. And it's going to be incomplete, but another flag is coming out. Yeah, that's a great job there by the Weber defense. We see number 51, Hunter Ferguson, fighting through to get pressure on Jackson. Jackson just kind of throws the ball up. I'm not sure that he even had any... <laughs> Not sure he had a lot of accuracy on that ball, but unfortunately, uh, again, we were getting picked on there in the secondary. It's going to be a pass interference called against this Weber Warriors offense. It's going to be another big first down for the Cavemen as they are marching down the field, but with the flag. Jackson takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to number 28, Jacob Eardley. And he's going to get about two yards on that pickup. The yeah, American Fork just getting back to the basics there with the run game, trying to establish a little bit more presence in the trenches. Good game there from American Fork on the handoff as uh, Weber's defense has been out there a lot and, and had to move around a lot just to stay, uh, stay up and compete with this American Fork offense. It's going to be second and six coming up from the 26-yard line. 14 to 3, the Cavemen lead. Jackson takes the snap. He's looking for a pass. That's going to be the number two, Aiden Cage, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds after he gets the first yard pick or first down pickup. Yeah, easy pitch and throw there for Cage and Jackson. Cage, the senior, tucks the ball, gets upfield, gets a few additional yards, but most importantly, they move the chains. And now American Fork is inside the red zone here, looking to score from the 19 yard line. First and 10 coming up for the Cavemen. Ball on the 19-yard line after a big reception from Aiden Cage, the senior wide receiver for this Cavemen offense. It's going to be Lincoln Jackson coming out with Jacob Eardley lined up in the backfield. He's looking to throw. The pressure comes, and he's going to be sacked. It's a great job there by uh, Weaver to turn up the pressure 
as American Fork starting to drive the ball. Conrad Kerr there with a sack, but assisted by several teammates. Again, just a complete breakdown up front on the pass protection from American Fork. What a great read defensively from Kerr to get in the backfield to sack Lincoln Jackson, and it's now going to be a second and long. Jackson again looking to throw. He's going to take it. He's going to run. He breaks a couple tackles. He's still up, and he's finally brought down. As he gets back to about, he makes it past the original marker, and it's going to be a third and long still here for the Cavemen. Yeah, it looks like about an eight-yard gain there on the QB scramble, able, able to get to about the 26-yard line. A good job by Jackson to tuck the ball, didn't like what he saw, felt the early pressure. He's a strong, tough runner. You can see that he's going to rely on his legs. We'll see if Weber makes an adjustment in how they bring their pressure. Third and eight, a big third and eight coming up for the Cavemen. Jackson takes the snap. The flag is out. He's looking for the end zone. It's going to be incomplete, and another flag comes out. And multiple flags on the field here. Weaver again bringing the delay blitz, bringing lots of pressure, trying to go after the quarterback. Be interesting to see what we get here from the White Hat. As we see the officiating crew huddle up here, uh, trying to decipher what to do between these offsetting penalties, and we'll hear what's happening right now. So it's going to be offsetting penalties, and the cavemen will get a second chance at third and eight. Ball on the ball on about the 16 yard line. Lincoln Church with the snap, but the referees are going to call the dead. Yeah, ball blown dead here, and, and we're getting on that territory where this officiating crew needs to get a control of things, needs to allow the game to even out. Too much officiating ruins the rhythm and the flow of a game. And you don't want to have the officials making this big of an impact, especially in a game with two teams that have been, for the most part, pretty evenly matched outside of a few mental errors here and there. It's been a good first half from both sides. We have about five minutes and 41 seconds left to play. The Cavemen currently hold a 14-3 lead over the Warriors. It's going to be third and eight coming up again for the Cavemen. See what Lincoln Jackson and his offense are able to do. Jackson takes the snap. He's going to throw it out to Dax Watts. Dax Watts with an opportunity. He gets pushed out at about the six yard line. And it's going to be enough for a first down. Yeah, it's a great play design there, as it looks like it was Jace Hull who, who caught the pass there, uh, number 11, I believe, as running a clear route. Drop him out in the flat. Weaver's not able to rotate the coverage over in time, and he's able to get the gain and the first down. And now we're first and goal for American Fork. This is where they've been very successful inside the five-yard line. First and goal coming up for the Caveman offense. Nobody lined up in the backfield. Jackson's going to take him himself, and it's going to be a touchdown! Yes, the referees are going to call it a touchdown came in after Jackson may have fumbled that one before he got in. Yeah, you see him trying to reach the ball across the off or, or across the goal line there and bobbled a little bit. You're seeing Weber arguing that the ball was not controlled as he crossed the line of scrimmage. White Hat gives us the official signal. It is a touchdown American Fork. And a great job by Jackson on the QB keeper. Just a draw play right up the middle. And not even a draw, just a keeper. And he is incredibly explosive. Touchdown. Lincoln Jackson finds the end zone. It's going to be a 20 to 3 lead for the Cavemen. Noah Anderson is out for the PAT. The kick is up and the kick is good. American Fork now leads 21 3 here with 526 left to play in this second quarter. Yeah, another positive drive for American Fork here. And we're seeing that Weber defense trying to compete, trying to stay in the fight. 
Wish the officials would let them stay in the fight a little bit more. But we'll see what happens as this Weaver offense is now up against it. they got to go get some points. How will the Warriors offense respond after going down even more? More when we return here on KSL Sports Rewind. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Just complete an application on your phone or computer or stop by any branch. Welcome back in here to Weber High, where the cavemen have just taken a bigger lead. It was going for the onside kick, and I think that might have been recovered by the cavemen. A surprise sneak out by American Fork, just a little dribbler kick. Weber uh, receiver not able to handle the kick, and that goes the direction of American Fork now, and they will be looking to score quickly on the surprise. Very, very disappointing to see that kick mishandled. Big play there from Tay Anderson, the kicker of the Cayman. He comes and he kicks the onside. And American Fork recovers, and it's going to be another ball for this Cayman offense. Yeah, and it looked like Weber was prepared for it, just not able to control that ball. Sometimes when you go up for those, get a little excited, not able to control it the way you normally would. Uh, just a, a great call by American Fork able to be there when the receiver is not able to execute and secure the catch. Now, Weber defense has to step up on this drive. They cannot go down 28 to three. And another flag is thrown here. And it's gonna... It's gonna go against the caveman and it's gonna push him back. Yeah, interesting that that uh, unsportsmanlike conduct assessed to the head coach it sounded like it was illegal equipment over the PA, but that pushes the caveman back to the 40-yard line. Now they've got 60 yards to go. This gives Weber an opportunity to stiffen up a little bit and be a little more aggressive. Weber defense coming up to try to stop champion Edwards, who is now in, and another flag is thrown on the play. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see this call. It does look like it's in the area of holding uh, there against American Fork on the edge as Edwards tries to get outside. Interesting that American Fork is going with the dual quarterback approach this game. Uh, not sure what the reasoning is behind that. And the refs were taking that one back, yeah. and then the ref said that the... It was declined, so it's going to bring up a second down for the Cavemen. Yeah, loss of yardage on the play is the result there. So you're looking at second and 25, 26 here for American Fork. So you can see the reasoning why you would decline the penalty, even with five minutes left in the game. Champion Edwards, he's going to drop back to pass, and it's going to be intercepted. It's going the other way. It's going to be number 24, Michael Holmes. Big well, interception. Holmes just sits back there in the coverage, and you see Edwards tries to throw the ball with some velocity, but he had the play read the whole time, steps in front of it, breaks to the outside. He's able to get a huge, huge turnover and generate some momentum for this Weber football team. Now they're going into the end zone from the 27-yard line, putting pressure on that American Fork defense. What a play there from the Weber Warriors defense, and now the Warriors offense will be taking the field. What a play. What an interception, and they are starting this drive in very good field territory, field position. Yeah, just a great play, able to bait the quarterback into thinking he saw something he didn't see, and now they're giving themselves an opportunity to fight. Ball is snapped. Carter with the throw. He finds number 45, and he's going to go all the way. That's going to be a Warriors touchdown. Number 45, Tyler Payne. Just a little tight end sneak out there for Tyler Payne, and it's a great reception. He's able to make the defender miss, 
bully his way into the end zone. And what a great call by the Weber offensive coordinator, able to get on the board quickly, get some of that momentum back, and all of a sudden Weber's looking right back in the thick of this thing. What a great pitch and catch there. What a play, what a score, and the Warriors now find themselves closing the gap just a bit. The kick is up from Jones, and the kick is good. It's now going to be a 21-10 lead for the, for the American Fork Cavemen with 4.54 left to play in this second quarter. What an amazing turn of events there as we see American Fork goes with the onside kick, able to recover, then has the critical unsportsmanlike penalty. Weber able to decline the penalty, which I would have accepted. I would have taken that one, but baits the quarterback in the interception, turns that immediately into a touchdown and paper dirt, and now all of a sudden it's something competitive. Now we're getting some excitement, 21-10. Absolutely. You can feel the momentum has now swung just a little bit in favor of these Warriors. We're going to take a step away really quick. We'll be back with more here from Weber High. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Just complete an application on your phone or computer or stop by any branch. Welcome back into Weber High. The touchdown from the Warriors puts 10 points on the board for the Warriors. It's 21-10 here with 4.54 left to play. Jace Jones with a beautiful kickoff, and that's just going to roll all the way back for a touchback. Yeah, Jace Jones quickly becoming my favorite kicker in the state. What a leg, what a weapon he is. And now you're starting to see the excitement this Weber crowd brought to life. This is a great environment, one of the most beautiful here uh, in the state, if not, you know, even in the western half of the country. And now you're seeing this Weaver defense come out with some energy. Now it's up to this American Fork offense to try and establish the things that they were doing early. They went away from the run game, tried to get a little cute pass in the football there. We'll see if they go back to it now. It looks like champion Edwards will stay on the field. He's coming back out after throwing an interception on the last drive. And it's going to be a timeout called for the Weaver Warriors. 4.54 left to play in this first half, 21 to 10, the Cavemen lead. And Brian, how are we feeling about the performance from the Weaver Warriors tonight? Well, this is a tough, gritty football team. They're well coached. This is a, a very proud program going up against one of the best that Region 4 has to offer. So you know this is a group that's going to rise to that challenge. We saw some early miscues, right? They're still having a hard time trying to handle Hunter Clegg. He's a one-man wrecking crew out there. But they stuck in the fight, and they've kept fighting through adversity. And that's what you have to love about a high school football team is those guys who are willing to rise to the challenge, even though everyone else out there might tell them that they're in a deficit. And you're seeing American Fork take some body blows from them. You're also seeing the caveman respond with some big plays as well. And we'll see how they respond now as they allow their first touchdown of the game. Here comes champion Edwards again to lead this offense. There's 4.54 left on the clock. Plenty of time for American Fork to do something here. And it's going to be a great pass. The pass is going to be caught by number 27, Trey Roberts, and another flag is thrown on the field. Yeah, trying to get a quick throw out to on, on that play. Get Edward some rhythm, right? Get him some easy completions. And there's the slant pass taking advantage of, of the, the man coverage there. Unfortunately, we've got an illegal man downfield penalty against the caveman, so that one's going to go back. And now we're really looking uh, at a bad situation if you're American Fork, because now you're first and 15, and you just blew your good call on the slant play, right? Absolutely. It's going to be push them back just a bit. It's going to be about first and 15 for the cavemen. From their own 15-yard line, they got a long field to go. Pass out to Dax Watts. Dax Watts breaks a couple tackles. Dax Watts gets almost enough for that first down. It's going to be a big play there from the running back, Dax Watts. Yeah, American Fork with a screenplay call, trying to take advantage of that Weber aggressiveness. Almost did. Weber defender almost gets Watts to the ground, but we've learned in this game you cannot tackle Dax Watts with one man. Great pickup there from Dax Watts. It's going to be second and three 
coming up for the cavemen. Big opportunity to try to get the first down here. Champion Edwards, he's going to run it. Edwards with the run. He's going to be pushed out of bound, but that's going to be enough for the first down. Yeah, just kind of the old school student body right for those uh, who may remember the play call. You just give to Edwards, let him get to the outside, try and get the yardage, and he does just that. Incredible athlete, great runner. When he's able to get to the edge like that, it's almost always positive yards. And it looks like the referee is going to spot him short. It's going to be a third and one coming up for the cavemen on their own 26-yard line. You wonder if maybe he stepped out of bounds and we just didn't see it as we're on the far side of the field. Edwards again. He's going to run it. That one is going to be enough for the first down, and he's still going. Big run, but another flag is thrown out on the play. Yeah, and this one comes from way back from the back judge, so you have to wonder if maybe there's a holding penalty there, but little QB draw action allowing uh, Edwards to get his legs involved in the game. A very nifty move to try and get some yardage. Unfortunately, with the miscues again, this is hurting the American Fork offense. We've seen uh, some pretty good runs from both Champion Edwards and Lincoln Jackson. Champion Edwards, who came out starting this one, and then Lincoln Jackson came in and ran one into the end zone. And now Champion Edwards showing off his legs here as well. Yeah, and that's a, that's a tough penalty against American Fork there as you converted on the first down. And now you're third and five from the 25-yard line, having to convert again. Big third down coming up here for the Cavemen. Champion Edwards there to take the snap. It looks like it's going to be Eardley lined up in the backfield. Or excuse me, that's Luke Segura. And he's going to get a catch, and he's going to run, and that's going to be enough for the first. Yes, yeah, Segura with a little catch out there in the flat, able to get upfield, shake the first defender, get some additional yardage, getting that yak, as we love to see, and he's <laughs> able to move the sticks. Tough setup for Weber on the defense there, as you had him dead to rights, not able to get to the, uh, not able to get to Segura in time and get him down to the ground. These American Fork running backs are strong, stout runners. You've really got a team tackle against them. Lucas Segura getting enough for the first down. It's going to be first and 10 on the 35-yard line. Champion Edwards takes that snap. He's looking to throw. That's going to be over the middle to 11. Jace Hull and Jace Hull. He's going to break a couple tackles, and Jace Hull's still going, and he's brought down past the 40-yard line. And you're seeing that the fatigue for the Weber defense starting to set in a little bit. Hull, a very speedy guy out of the slot there, and they're mixing up personnel well here for American Fork. They've got some very big, strong receivers. They've also got some quick, shifty guys mixing that personnel up, ma mainly in 11 personnel, one tight end, one running back, but variety there at the wide receiver position. Big play from Jace Hull. The wide receiver senior for this caveman team, Champion Edwards, he's going to throw pressure coming. He gets hit on the way down. That ball's incomplete. Yeah, it's a basically basic pay act, play action there. Edwards stands in the back, thinking his wide receiver is going deep, takes a shot, delivers the ball, overthrows his receiver by a country mile, should we say. <laughs> and uh, now... Again, the caveman looking at second and long. Interesting coaching call there. Not, not here to criticize, but just your run game has been working, right? The short stuff is working. Trying to take a shot there to get some points, I understand it. But it gives Weaver a little bit more confidence now. And it's going to be champion Edwards. He's going to take the snap, and he's going to run for it himself. And he's going, and he's going, and he might go. He's brought down at about the five-yard line. Huge pickup from champion Edwards for this caveman offense. Listen, Weber's defense has been so strong all game, but starting to show a little bit of fatigue there as it's the inside draw, QB Reed. He's able to cut up the middle, and Edwards takes advantage of his athleticism, his speed, able to get a huge gain for American Fork, and we talk about those explosive plays being critical in continuing drives. Now, Weber's up against it. Where's your toughness at? Where's your heart at? Big play, big run from champion Edwards. He's looking for the end zone, and that's going to be a touchdown, Caveman. Aiden Cage on the reception, 27-10. Yeah, just an easy, almost like a fade route there to the corner. Cage, a big receiver. Edwards able to drop it in in his arms. Great pitch and throw there. 
Great job by American Fork to execute inside the red zone, inside the five-yard line. And now they look to go up. After the Weber touchdown, American Fork marches the ball all the way down the field. Noah Anderson with the PAT is good. And we are now looking at a 28 to 10 lead for the Cavemen with 157 left to play in this first half. Yeah, you see Weber's been on the field a lot defensively. Started to see a little bit of, of early half fatigue setting in there. American Fork, a few miscues early on that Weber could not capitalize on. American Fork moves the ball down the field and then an easy, beautiful pitch and catch. Uh, with champion Edwards there to complete the drive with a touchdown and that's how you always want to finish every drive that you can with a TD and uh, especially with just a little under two minutes on the clock here big play big drive and a good drive for the um, cavemen we're going to take a step away here on KSL Sports Rewind more when we return at UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low-rate option you prefer. And then sit back and enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have a low-rate line of credit. Ready for whatever life throws at you. To learn... Welcome back into Weber High, where the Cavemen have just taken a 28-10 lead over the Warriors. Another flag is thrown out here on the kickoff. And it's going to be a delayed game for the kicking team. Yeah, interesting call there. I haven't seen that one made a ton, but again, uh, this crew seems to be very... Uh, on top of the details, should we say, and, and, and making sure that this clean game is as clean as possible. Champion Edwards, number 10 quarterback senior for the Cavemen, led his team on a very good drive. He had a very big run to set him up in the red zone on close to the goal line, and then he just finds Aiden Cage on that last drive. Big time play from Cage and Edwards to extend their lead over the Warriors. The kick is off. We were looking for a big return, but this time he's brought down bef behind the 25 yard line at about the 23. Uh, yeah, we've seen some good work from the Weber special team so far. Not able to capitalize on the penalty maybe as much as you'd like, but still decent field position and they'll have about a minute 51 to work with. We'll see how Aiden Carter do does. He, Took a hit early on, seen a few fluttery balls out of him, but he's fighting through it, trying to compete. And they had a great play call early on with the tight end pop pass to get the touchdown. Less than two minutes, it's, it's on this Weber offense now to try and counter. Two-minute drill. You, gotta, you go back to that summer where you work on all those two-minute drills, and this is, this is where it comes out. That's right. It's a lot of time and effort for this moment. Carter takes the snap. He's looking to throw. It looks like he finds Tavin Nye. Or excuse me, that's number six, Crash Coggins, with the reception. Yeah, Coggins does a good job to get underneath the ball and catch it. Carter getting lots of pressure in his face. We're seeing Hunter Clegg with the speed rush. Another throw out this time. It's to Swain. Swain gets hit big time there by number five, Cale Burrows. And he's brought down at about the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Burroughs does a great job of closing hard and fast on Swain. Not able to get to the sideline, not able to get out of bounds, able to get at least a couple yards there. But we were forced to take the timeout, settle things down. You're seeing the impact of Hunter Clegg and how good he is on that edge. Just completely dominating his man, putting so much pressure on Carter that he's not able to set and deliver the football like he'd like. We're going to take a step away here on this timeout. Keep with us here on KSL Sports Rewind for more action live from Weber High. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low-rate option you prefer. And then sit back and enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have a low-rate line of credit. Ready for whatever? Welcome back in here to Weber High with a minute 23 left on the clock. The Cayman lead 28 to 10. Carter, it's going to be an interception and he's going to go all the way. That's going to be Cale Burrows on the pick six. It looked like a miscommunication there on the part of uh, the Weber wide receiver and quarterback. Cale Burrows able to step in front and he is untouched to the house for another touchdown. Now, 
34 to 10 pending that PAT for American Fork. Rough turn of events here for Weber. Linebacker senior Kale Burrows reads that well, steps up and takes the pick six all the way back. Big, big play there from Burroughs. Yeah, just a huge momentum killer, especially right before the half. Really tough to see that happen for Weber. As you can see, looking very dejected on the sideline. But credit to Burroughs. He's been on, on the spot every single time. Noah Anderson out for the PAT. Ball is snapped, the kick is up, and the kick is good. The Cavemen have just taken a 35-10 lead over the Warriors with a minute 14 left. Tough turn of events there for Weber as they're trying to get down the field and maybe get something going before halftime. Great, great, great effort there by the American Fork defense. That's their moment to shine. You see how much talent they have and just the impact that Hunter Clegg can have on a game. And again, Burroughs with the tremendous effort to step in front of the pass, read the quarterback's eyes, know exactly where he was going, and able to take it all the way to the house. That'll be one that he'll remember for a while. What a fun game we've had here tonight. American Fork coming out, getting the early points, and then momentum kind of shifted to Weber for a bit. And now I think with that, the momentum is all for the Cavemen yet again. And after a penalty called, an unsportsmanlike penalty called after the touchdown, the pick six, um, this ball is going to be kicked off from the 25-yard line. Yeah, and we've seen the Weaver special teams be great tonight. You have to wonder if maybe they have something dialed up here or if they're looking to try and get something going. Just anything that they can get some momentum before the half. Tate Farnsworth, the kicker, out to kick this one. Low driven kick, and it, it, the flags are coming out again. Yeah, again, this crew being e extremely uh, precise in terms of everything going properly. Does look like this one will play in favor of Weber here as they're going to get it. It looks like an illegal procedure against uh, American Fork. That'll back them up to the 20 yard line here. And you how often do you see uh, high school kickoffs coming from the 20 yard line, Brian? I, how often do you see it from <laughs> like in any level of the game? This is fascinating to me. You have to wonder if maybe American Fork does a little bit of a squib kick. Anything to try and get some advantages. They're kicking from a very deep hole. As you see, the uh, Weaver returners are standing at the 25-yard line. That would already be great field position with a minute 14 left. Tate Farnsworth coming to re-kick this one. Another low-driven kick. That one is going to be number eight, Moa, with a decent return there. Almost got to the 50-yard line, and it's going to be the Weaver Warriors offense coming out again. Yeah, Celestia Moa does a great job securing the kick, getting upfield quickly, able to get about 20 yards on that one. They'll start out here on the 49-yard line, not or 48-yard line, not terrible field position. Uh, good opportunity to maybe get a field goal up on the board, maybe even take a shot downfield if you feel like it. As you can see the American Fork defenders are back uh, in that almost prevent-style defense, uh, trying to keep everything underneath. Absolutely. Plenty of time here for this Weber Warriors offense. He's looking for Moa. It's Alessi Moa, and he's going to go in for a touchdown, Warriors. That's exactly the play that Weber needed. Just a little something to jumpstart the energy, get some momentum. We see blown coverage there as Moa goes untouched. Great ball from Aiden Carter, and it's a TD touchdown for Celesti Moa. That puts Weber back to life. Salesi Moa with a touchdown. The freshman finds the end zone, and it's now going to be a 35-16 lead for the Cavemen. 52-yard touchdown pass. Great throw by Aiden Carter. Even better catch. An explosion from Moa to get to the end zone. Jace Jones out for the PAT. Ball is snapped. Kick is up. Kick is good, but another flag is out on the play. Yeah, 
a false start here on the offense, but I don't think that's going to play a factor with Jace Jones. He's got plenty of leg, plenty of accuracy. Even more than that, though, Weaver with the big play to get the touchdown up on the board right before half, get some of the, that momentum back, maybe give themselves a little bit more life. Is there still 58 seconds left in this one? Jace Jones to retry that kick. And another flag is coming out, and I think that one's going against Weber again. Yeah, you have to have to guess that that's the case with the American Fork defenders pointing the pointing at the uh, Weber Weber uh, field goal protect front there. Uh, maybe a little gamesmanship going on there with American Fork, you know, trying to get those uh, Weber offensive players to move. Another. A false start on the PAT. This one's going to have to be kicked from behind the 20 yard line. Kick is up. The kick is good. No question about it. Jace Jones. No, it's going to no good. Yeah, and we said Jones has plenty of leg, but not able to get it through the uprights as it skirts that far left upright. No good. Important to get that kind of execution. You saw it two times in a row, not able to, to hold their water up front for Weber, and it cost them a point. Jace Jones, no good on the PAT. It's going to be 35-16 with 58 seconds left to play. We're going to take a step away here on KSL Sports Rewind. Stick with us for more action here from Weber High. Life throws at you. To learn more or start your application, visit uccu. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low-rate option you prefer. And then sit back. Welcome back in here to Weber High, where the Warriors have just taken Celeste Moa with a big touchdown right before the half. Jace Jones with a kickoff hole is back to return, but that one's just going to flow all the way back for a touchback. Caven offense is going to be taking the field again with 58 seconds left to play in this one. It's a 35-16 to 16 lead. And how will this Caven offense respond after that big touchdown from Celesi Moa? Yeah, you know, American Fork's been able to sustain some drives, but we haven't seen a ton of super explosive plays uh, from them. You know, 15, 20 yard chunks, but nothing right off the bat. So we'll see what they're able to do with only 58 seconds left in the half. It looks like Lincoln Jackson will be coming out again to lead this offense. He takes the snap, he throws. That's gonna be a big catch from Jace Hole. And he's going to be brought down past the 45-yard line. What a big play on first down from this Cayman offense. Just as soon as I say that they haven't had the explosive plays that come out <laughs> and get a big one there. Jace Hull, the speedy slot receiver, able to reel it in and get a big gain. Big opportunity here for American Fork. Lincoln again. He's going to run. Flag is out. It's going to be Hull again. He's going to be pushed out of bounds at about the 45, or yes, the 45-yard line. Yeah, we do have that penalty flag out. It does look like this one may be coming back in the area of holding there at the line of scrimmage. But Hull, again, a very shifty, very crafty route runner, able to get the defender on skates a little bit and get open. And you can see that Jackson's looking for him every single time that he gets a chance. And yes, it looks like the ball will be coming back after that big reception from Jace Hull. Back-to-back plays where he called Hull's number. Yeah, and you can see it out there, especially from our vantage point. Hull does a great job making very efficient cuts, small, shifty, very explosive uh, route runner, and, and we'll see what this Weber defense is able to do to contain him. After the flag, it's going to bring the ball back. It's going to be a first down for the Cavemen. Back in caveman territory. Lincoln Jackson takes the snap. He's looking for Hole again. Hole with the reception. He breaks a tackle. He's still going. Jace Hole. I think that's enough for the first down. What a play from Jace Hole. 
Yeah, just using him in a variety of fashions. That time getting him behind the uh, offensive line for a little bit of a screen action. American Fork calls the timeout after getting the first down with 24 seconds. They're now in business as they're on the uh, opponent's side of the 50-yard line at about the 44-yard line. First and 10, 24 seconds left. We'll see if the caveman can get some more points on the board here. Keeping those chains moving after the penalty, the cavemen found themselves in a first and long, but Jace Hole, his third reception on this drive, back to back to back, and Jace Hole does enough to get that first down. What a performance, what a play we are seeing from Jace Hole on this drive. Yeah, you're just seeing the variety of, of options that this American Fork offense has. Dual quarterbacks, dual receivers, dual running backs. It seems like whoever they're rolling out there, there's big potential for a big play. Uh, making me eat my words about the explosive plays are the, is the American Fork offense. We know they've got the big offensive line. Now they're showing it in a variety of other fashions as well. Lincoln Jackson coming back out to lead this offense. There's still 24 seconds left on the clock. Plenty of time for something to happen. Jackson takes a snap. He drops back, and he's going to take off. He's going to run. He gets probably about a yard gain on that one, and it's a big stop there from the Warriors' defense. Yeah, and American Fork's going to take a timeout here. As you see the Weaver defense putting the, the pressure on Jackson, he's forced to tuck it and run. Great job by the right defensive end there to really press the pocket and push Jackson outside of it, force him upfield. He's able to get some yards. But the bigger, the bigger deal here is, is the clock, as we have 17 seconds left, and that was only a two-yard gain. Second and nine is what the referees are going to call it. It's going to be second and nine coming up for the cavemen on the 44-yard line. Lincoln Jackson and Jace Holt linking up very well on this drive, keeping it alive after they had that first and long. It's going to be Jackson coming out again to lead this offense. Yeah, and you have to think with 17 seconds left that Weber's going to take their chances with Jackson running the football and try and really drop their de defense back and keep everything in front of them. Jackson drops back to pass, and he's going to run. He's going to throw. He's looking deep, and it's going to be batted down by the Warriors' defense incomplete on second down. Yeah, looking deep for the wide receiver there over the middle. Plenty of help from the Weber defenders as they knew that American Fork had to get some big yards very fast, able to deflect the football. And now, with 11 seconds left, we'll have to see what American Fork does on third and eight, third and nine. Third and nine with 11 seconds left. Ball on the 44-yard line. American Fork leads 35-16. Jackson takes the snap. He's looking deep. He's going to throw. He's looking for a receiver. And that's going to be, I believe, Jace Hole with a touchdown for the Cavemen. Just an incredible grab by Hull there, able to snag the ball away from multiple Weaver defenders. How did he come down with that football and get the touchdown? And there is going to be a flag on the play against the Cavemen. I don't think that one's going to count. Yeah, this one is definitely coming back. What an unfortunate call. Great play by Hull. I can't believe he was able to break through that many defenders. Snag the football, pops up, rolls the ball out, struts it out. What a great play. How many guys did he have around him? That was about at least three defenders and around him. And he was still, guys on the he field still able well. to bring it back. What a play there from Jace Hull. Just a very disappointing mental error there by the American Fork offense. Not able to put points on the board. And now, boy. It's going to be a third and very long. <laughs> for yeah. this takes them all the way back to their 42 yard line then now they're looking at third and 20 something with very little time on the clock clock currently showing zero here but i think they're going to maybe have an untime down here it looks like we are going to get a time out before anything is played should be the last play here of the first half and you have to wonder what that discussion is on the American Fork side. And is it even worth it at this point in time to really try and take a shot downfield? You've seen Jace Hole make some incredible plays. And so maybe you put something together to try and get the defense away from him. Maybe an overload set to the field side where you can sneak him underneath and to the backside. Maybe put him in the backfield. That, there's a lot of options here. He's been so explosive. does look like that 
American Fork is going to send out the punt team? Yeah, they're just going to punt it away. Or is this not? Excuse me. It does look like they are going to uh, kneel the ball here, which I think is the smart decision. Victory I coming out for, or the QB kneel coming out for uh, the Cavemen here for the last play of this first half. What about the Warriors and this electric offense so far in this first half? Yeah, it, it's been incredible. You know, the Cavemen have done it in a variety of fashions. We've seen them establish the run game, done a great job of utilizing both quarterbacks and their athleticism in running the football. Uh, that QB draw has been absolutely uh, lethal, you know, for, for the American Fork Caveman. But you have to give some credit to this Weber defense as they've hung in there, they've been put in some bad spots, and they've done a really, really good job of holding up as, you know, in, in the face of a turnover with the offense. And while the score doesn't necessarily look like it with 35 to 16, this has been a pretty competitive affair. It has been very competitive. I've liked what I've seen from both sides of the ball, both the uh, Weber and both the Cavemen. When we return, we'll have the second half kickoff here on KSL Sports Rewind. Halftime 35-16, the Cavemen lead. We'll be back after these messages from KSL. Welcome back into Weber High School. We're getting ready to kick off the second half here with the American Fork Cavemen leading 35-16 leading to 16 over the Weber Warriors. And we've seen some pretty interesting kicks from uh, Tate Anderson so far in this uh, first half. Yeah, it's it's been a real uh, grab bag of opportunity here. So saw the offsides kick or the onsides kick. Not sure that you want to repeat that one right out of the jump. Weaver's going to be looking for it. They're definitely going to have addressed it at halftime. So try to kick this one deep and, and see if you can limit that return for Weaver. I think they would also want to keep it away from Celesi Moa, who had a big return in the first half. But that ball is going to go right for Moa. No, it's gonna actually going to go out of bounds. Kickoff is going to go out of bounds, and the flag is out. Well, he did what you told him to do, kept the ball away from <laughs> Moa. Unfortunately, couldn't keep the ball in bounds, and so now Weaver will get the ball looking pretty at, at the 35-yard line with some opportunity to get some movement. And the best part about this for Weaver, you can come out, you can establish your game plan again. You want to run the football, right? You want to get this uh, superb American Fork front worn down a little bit because they've done a great job of putting pressure on especially with two and three men uh, just because of how great Hunter Clegg is and now we see Clegg trying to line up in, as a linebacker and then he slides up to the, uh, the defensive line. Clegg trying to trick this Weber offense. Carter making some adjustments before the snap. He's under center. Coming out in the I formation. Ball is snapped. Handed off to Swain and Swain is going to get a good pickup here. About a six-yard run there on first down for uh, Nikosi Swain. And you can see the reasoning from American Fork. They're trying to shoot Hunter Clegg into that backfield and really disrupt the play. Carter sees what's going on, makes the adjustment straight out of the eye formation, just an easy downfield zone play. And Swain is able to get a good chunk of yardage doing exactly what we talked about, establishing that line of scrimmage. Nikosi Swain picking up a good run here on first down. It's going to be second and third. Coming up for the Weaver Warriors ball on the 42-yard line. And it looks like Carter is going to be out waiting for that snap. The ball is snapped. He hand, No, he throws. He's looking for number eight, Moa. But that one's going to go incomplete. Yeah, a little late on the signal there from the official is Moa runs a slat route. Carter on the play action fake, trying to get the ball out in time. Moa not able to corral it in. Good effort there from Weber. You're still second and short, so you can kind of take a little shot with that one. Uh, now they're left with, it looks like, about third and four. Uh, third and three, third and four there. Uh, gives you some options still. You can try and run the ball a little bit, maybe a screen pass, something quick to the outside, anything to keep this drive going. And how about Aiden Cage on that play? I thought Cage came up with another interception on that one, but the referee called it down before he came up with it. It's going to be a third down here for Weber. Aiden Cage, or excuse me, Aiden Carter, getting ready to take that snap. Ball is snapped. He's looking to throw. Pressure coming. The flag is out. The pressure is still there. He is able to get it off. The pass is complete, but we'll see what the flag is on this play. 
Yeah, it's up front at the line of scrimmage, so you have to wonder if either it's a hold or maybe an illegal block below the waist, one of those things. This crew has not been afraid of throwing a flag on just about anything. It's a great job by Carter to get to avoid the pressure, get outside the pocket, find his receiver, trying to make positive yards. Just doesn't look like it's going to uh, stand as it. the signal from the official is blocked below the waist. That was number 31, Austin Gussie, on the reception. But it will go back. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty against the Warriors, and it's going to bring up a third and long. That's a tough penalty against Weaver there. Gussie is a guy that we've seen make some plays. They were able to get the ball in his hands finally now, third and long. You have to wonder if maybe you just go with something simple like a handoff or a draw play. You want to try and minimize the damage here where you're so now deep in your own, in your own end zone. Third and 18, ball on the 27. The ball is snapped. Carter dropping back. The pressure's coming. He steps up in the pocket. He's going to roll out to his left. The ball is thrown. And the referee says that is a catch from number 13, Corbin Alvord. And it's going to be a Warriors first down. Just a tremendous job by Aiden Carter to avoid the rush. Hunter Clay coming at him. Tries to get to him. Carter able to avoid the rush. Rolls out to the right there. Spots his receiver. Throws the ball on the numbers to where only the receiver can go get it. And it's a huge play for Weber as they come up to the line of scrimmage in a rush. First and 10 in American Fork territory. Big play there from this Weber Warriors offense. Aiden Carter going under center after that big, big play on third and long. The ball is handed off to Swain. Swain gets a couple yards on that run, but then he runs into that big wall of caveman defense. Yeah, runs right into the meat of that defense. And, it, you know, as much as we've seen Swain have success and churn those legs, he's not able to get a lot of movement against the real teeth of that American Fork defense, but still gets a couple yards. You know, everything is good for Weber. There's still everything on the table. You're second and eight here, and you've had some success early on with the pass game. Little two-yard gain there from Nikosi Swain on the first down play. It's going to be second and eight from the 39-yard line. Ball snap. Carter dropping back to pass. He's going deep. He's looking for Moa, and it's going to be incomplete. But really, really tight coverage there by the American Fork defender as Carter throws the ball up. Seeing that Moa has been able to get past his defender almost all game, uh, ball a little bit underthrown. He's not able to come back for it and get the reception. Not a, not a shot that I would, you know, disagree with. It, like I said, you're second and long. You're on the 40-yard line. Maybe take that shot. Try and loosen up the defense a little bit more. Just not able to connect. Very similar play to what we saw in the first half when Moa was able to catch that and take it in for a touchdown. Um, but it looks like there was a flag on the play, and the ball's going to go back. We're going to repeat second down. Yeah, about in the yardage of, of holding or, or one of those 10-yard penalties as we weren't able to get the signal from the officiating crew. It's going to be third and 19 coming up for the Weber Warriors. Ball on the 50-yard line. Ball incomplete, and then the flag puts him back. Carter takes the snap. He's looking to throw. The pressure's coming, and he's going to be sacked behind the 40-yard line. Yeah, tough one there by Carter as he tries to double pump, hesitates just a little bit, not able to get past the hot, uh, the hot read there as Maximus Edwards looks like comes from the edge uh, with a lot of speed and able to corral uh, the big QB Carter for the loss. This really puts Weber in a hole here now as they face third and ultra long. <laughs> third and very long coming up for Weber. It's going to be third and 25 on the – the refs are going to spot it at the 41. Yeah, and a great job there by the American Ford coaching staff. Great defensive call, bringing the pressure from the, uh, from the nickel, uh, nickel corner there as he's able to get a sack. It's going to be – Carter again takes a snap. He's going to try to run to get some yardage here. And then he's going to slide down at about the 48-yard line. Very far off from first down. And it will bring up fourth and 25. 
Yeah, Carter, the big quarterback, big, strong kid, trying to get outside the pocket, trying to make a defender miss. Did the smart thing, just takes the slide, gets some positive yardage here for Weber, and they'll punt the ball and try and pin this American Fork offense back. Punt team coming out. Jace Jones, the senior kicker for this Weber Warriors team. He's been very good tonight. Did miss the PAT in the first half, but his punts have been extraordinary. And the Cavemen almost get a block there, but that one's going to go all the way back. And it's going to be fielded inside the 10-yard line. And you can see the rush by American Fork. They knew there was an opportunity to put some pressure on the punter, but luckily for the Weber uh, side of the side of the field, they they get the positive bounce, uh, able to get that ball inside of the ten yard line as it's now set up at the eight yard line. And American Fork has their work cut out for them, and this will be a fresher Weber defense as they've had the halftime and an additional four minutes of game time to get ready. Big drive coming up for the Cavemen. It looks like it's going to be Lincoln Jackson coming out to lead the Cavemen on this drive. Ball starting at the eight-yard line. The pressure's coming, and he's going to be taken down at the one-yard line. Well, it looks like a little miscommunication up front as there's a Weber defender that comes in free, forces the quarterback to kind of tuck and hesitate. By that point in time, the Weber pressure had reached him, and he goes down, and it looks like about the four-yard line, and that is a huge, huge loss, huge, huge job. Great job, I should say, by the Weber defense there to get the sack and push the caveman back even further. Big play, big response from this Warriors defense. The ball is going to be on the three-yard line, second and 15. Jackson to throw. He's looking for Trey Roberts, but it's going to be in his hands and eventually falls for incomplete. Yeah, it just looked like he wasn't ready for that one. Not able to secure the catch. Had some room there, probably could have made a defender miss and, and gotten some additional yardage. Now all of a sudden American Fork is up against it, third and long from deep in their own side of the field. That is a guy's, that's a guy who we haven't really called much tonight, Trey Roberts, the senior receiver who was very good last week against, B, or excuse me, against Roy. And Jackson finds Jace Hole over the middle. Looks like it might be close to a first down there. We'll have to wait and see where the officials spot it. And, and they wave the sticks forward. It looks, looks like it will be a yeah, first down. Yeah, it looks like it will be a first down for the Warrior, or excuse me, the Caveman offense. Well, it's a great job by Jace Hull to, you know, his quarterback's under duress back there, not able to set up on platform and really deliver the ball, but Hull is able to reach out, snag and wrap that one up and get the first down. That's a huge conversion for American Fork. Big play over the middle for Jace Hole. That snap is a little wobbly there. Jackson is able to reel it in, and it's going to be a completion to number 80, Josh Andrews. He's going to get a nice little chunk of game there. Yeah, Andrews, the tight end there, doesn't see a ton of catches, especially with the depth at wide receiver that American Fork has. But as you see, the wobbly snap disrupts the motion on the play action, not able to deliver it in rhythm. And it's a short, well, it's a decent game, but not a great game. We well, have some chaos here. Yeah, it looks like the offensive line of the American Fork Cavemen were not ready for that. He's going to be sacked. It looked like everybody on the American Fork side of the ball was waiting for a whistle that never came, and Weaver takes advantage, able to push the caveman back, and more importantly, push them back even further on the down chart. It's going to be third and six on the 22-yard line after that sack. Jackson drops back to pass. He's looking for Trey Roberts, and it is going to be incomplete. Just kind of throws that one up, knows that he's got the speedy Roberts out there, but it's a great job by the Weber defensive secondary, specifically number 23, Taven Norton, to knock the ball away. Roberts not able to reel it in. That's a big, big stop for this Weber defense. Big. You can see it on the sideline. They're jumping up and down and celebrating getting some life back. Big play, big in completion, and it's going to be up a fourth down for the Cavemen. They're going to punt it away, but it looks like there was some confusion over on that Weber sideline because they're going to use one of their timeouts. Boy, and I'm going to get a little cliche, cliche here, but that's the kind of thing that you hate to see as a coach. You make a big play like that, and then you're forced to use a timeout. You know, you're still close in this game, right? Three-score game, nothing is out of reach. You may need that tied out. Tied, timeout 
later on in the game. But nevertheless, it's a big stop by Weber there, able to get the deflection, good stand by the defense, able to get the ball back in the offense's hands, see if maybe we can get some more. Uh, the offensive line establishing the run game with Swain, right, getting Carter, some of those short, easy throws. And you never know with this Weber team, they are so well coached, especially on special teams, maybe something happens on this punt. There's still plenty of time left, plenty of game left. Anything can happen, including Weber getting back, closing that gap, and now it's going to be a big opportunity as the Cavemen are punting this one away. It's going to be Moa back to return, and it's a wobbly kick, and it's going to land at about the 49-yard line. Not the best punt is going to give Weber a very good field position to start. Yeah, Weber did a good job of not sending the entire house, but getting pressure on the kick. You can see the kick kind of goes off the side of the foot a little bit there. Gets a generous bounce to get out of bounds at the 49-yard line. But nevertheless, Weber starts with excellent field position, almost where they left off from the last drive. And you have to think that with a fresh set of downs, having established some things previous drive, that they'll come out with some confidence here. Aiden Carter, senior quarterback, coming out to lead this Weaver offense as they get the ball back on their 40 on the 49-yard line. Hand it off to Swain on the first draw on the first play. Or excuse me, that looks like that's number 31. Austin Gussie. Yeah, and that Gussie Swain combination combination has been good for Weaver as Gussie has a little bit more of the power style, the thunder, if you will, uh, to Swain's lightning. But you're starting to see some hands on hips from this American Fork defense. You're starting to see some more knockbacks, some more pushback. Uh, as much as they're trying to get Hunter Clegg involved, on that one he got driven all the way back off the ball. Second and nine coming up for the Weaver Warriors ball on the 48-yard line. Carter takes the snap. He's going to hand it off again to Gussie, and he gets probably about a yard on that pickup. Yeah, and a great job there uh, by the American Fort defensive line to sneak through the backfield, especially number 91, Waki Fulilangi, the junior, six foot, 240 pounds, but he plays a lot bigger than that, I tell you what. And able to sneak past the offensive line and shoelace tackle the running back. Couple players coming on to change the defense a bit for the cavemen as the Warriors get ready for this third and long. Third and nine coming up from the 48 yard line. Carter takes the snap. He's dropping back. The pressure's coming. The flag is out, but he's looking for Moa. Yep, yep, yep. And the referee is going to say that that is out of bounds. It will be incomplete. Celesi Moa. With the catch, or it was intended to go to Celesi Moa, but we'll see what the call is here on the play. Yeah, great job by Carter to avoid the rush, try and get outside the pocket there as uh, they're trying to get down the field uh, here in the third quarter. Uh, 3.34 left. It's going to be a face mask called against the cavemen, and it's going to give... A first down to this Weaver Warriors offense. Yeah, and while they weren't able to get the completion on the deep ball to Moa, they are able to get the penalty in their favor that will move the chains. And again, Weber is in business now as they sit at the 33-yard line driving towards the caveman end zone. Big time first down coming up for the Warriors. Trying to get momentum, trying to get an opportunity to close the gap. Carter takes the snap. He's looking to throw. It takes a tip, but it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, trying to hit the inside slot there on, on the slant route. Ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. As a defense, that's an opportunity missed right there. Anytime you get a tip ball, you want to turn that into a turnover. If you're Weber, whew, wiping the sweat off your brow that that one didn't go into the opposite side hands. It's going to be a second and 10 coming up for the Warriors. Ball on the 33-yard line. Third quarter here at Weber High School. 3.29 left to play in this one. The Cavemen lead 35-16. to 16. Carter hands it off to Gus, or excuse me, yeah, Gussie again. But he's going to be brought down. 
Yeah, under center, just a basic off tackle eye formation. Gussie doing a great job of protecting that football, staying behind his blockers, trying to stay patient. Doesn't get a ton of yardage on that one, able to pick up a few there, and that will put him in third and long now. Third and eight, third and seven thereabouts. Uh, still heading into the caveman end zone. We'll have to see what Aiden Carter is able to come up with here. Probably the most important thing coming out of that play for the caveman is that the clock is running. We're down to 2.48 here. Carter takes the snap. He's looking to throw. He's looking for number four. That's Brandon Parker, and he's going to be in for a touchdown, Warriors. Great job again by Aiden Carter. Avoids the pressure, steps up in the pocket, throws a little bit of a sidearm out, out, side out there. I'm so excited because it was such a tremendous catch. Great job, great effort by the wide receiver to get it across the goal line and into the end zone for the score. Weber right back in this thing, 35-22, pending that PAT. We'll see if maybe they decide to go for it here. And it looks like... It uh, looks like now maybe the PATs can... Well, no, they're no, going they're for gonna it. Go for they're going to go right. for a two-point conversion here. Try and capitalize on that momentum. What a play from Braylon Parker. The junior wide receiver finds the end zone, and he closes that gap just a little bit, and we'll see what the Warriors are able to conjure here in on this two-point conversion play. Yeah, Braden better take care of his hands after that. It was a great catch. Carter looking to throw. It's going to be intercepted, and the play is dead. The two-point conversion is no good, and it remains 35-22 here. The Cavemen lead with 2.37 left to play. Yeah, Carter tries to throw the quick inside route. His wide receiver falls on the play, not able to get hands on it. Ball is tipped, obviously, where it's a two-point attempt. Uh no kind of turnover or anything like that. We'll go right off to the kickoff now. Uh, tough, tough non-conversion there by Weber. Not able to get the two points. Nevertheless, they get six points on the board. That's the most important part. And now suddenly this game is a little bit closer, I think, than American Fork would have liked at 35-22. Weber closing that gap. We have two minutes, 37 left to play here in this third quarter. When we return, we'll have more of third quarter action live from Weber High. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Test day's test day. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. Welcome back in here to Weber High, where the Warriors have just closed the gap a bit. It's now 35-22, Caveman lead. That ball from Jace Jones is going to go all the way back into the end zone. It's going to be a touchback, and we're going to get the Caveman offense back on the field. I don't know that I've ever had a uh, crush on a kicker the way I do Jace Jones, but he's... <laughs> Knocking the ball deep out of those end zones, making it a non-issue. And you have to think that American Fork, with, with the level of talent that they have on this team and the, the number of talented skill guys, that they might have been able to generate some returns not having it. Shout out Jace Jones. We love our special teams here at KSL Sports Rewind. Kickers and punters are people too, right? They absolutely are. <laughs> hug your kickers, hug your punters. It's going to be a first down here. Champion Edwards looks to be coming back out to lead this caveman offense. He's going to be pushed out of bounds, and I think he was pushed out at about the line of scrimmage on that one. Yeah, maybe get a couple, couple feet there. It looks like they spot it right there at the 20-yard line, but not able to get much on the quarterback sweep to the outside. Great job by the Weber defense to maintain gap control and force the runner to continue to – towards the sideline rather than trying to cut up field. And we know Champion Edwards with that athleticism. If he cuts up field, he is a really tough athlete to bring down. Ball is snapped. Champion Edwards again. He's looking to throw. That's going to be a catch by number 22. Late flag there on the play. We'll have to wait and see. It looks like it was number 27. 27. Trey Roberts with the reception, but there is a flag on the play. And you can see why Trey Roberts had such a good game last week. You know, a lot of a shifty ability we like to call that wiggle or a little bit of juice to his game able to secure the ball try and get some more yak 
and that's the second time that we've seen an eligible receiver downfield from American Fork. Those are the kind of penalties. And when we talked to half, coming out of halftime, like you have to eliminate those mental errors. Those are exactly the kind of mistakes that you want to stay away from if you're American Fork. And this is the reason why. Now suddenly you're back second and 15, second and 16, when you could have had positive yards for third and short. It's been a game full of penalties, a game game where we keep getting pushed back both on both sides of the ball, both the Cavemen and the Warriors. Edwards' is pass is going to be batted, and it's going to be incomplete. It looks like he was looking for a Hunter Clegg on that one. Yeah, interesting Clegg lining up at the tight end position there. Edwards trying to get it out to him quickly, but a great job by the Weaver defensive front there to get hands on it, to knock that play down at the line of scrimmage. You have to believe that this coaching staff is very uh, – very excited about that kind of intensity, uh, especially after they were struggling a little bit there towards the end of this first half. Great job by Dawson Fenn to knock that ball down. And the Warrior players on the sideline trying to get the fans involved into this one as we have a big third and 15 coming up. Edwards steps up. He's looking deep. The ball is incomplete, and it's going to be a fourth down coming up for the Cavemen. Yeah, pass intended there for the tight end, Andrus. He's... Got a big frame, but not quite able to extend high enough to pick that one off. Edwards, as we saw, trying to get the ball downfield as much as he can. Not able to make the completion. And Weaver gets another not quite turnover on downs as we await the punt, but another big stop. And we'll get their offense back on the field in, in great field position again. Is that number 85 coming out to punt? Looks like 85 from up here, so I do apologize if that is incorrect. Punt is away, almost blocked. And he brought and a big play there from Trey Roberts. Yeah, Trey Roberts makes the tackle on the return, but there is a yellow handkerchief on the field as Mr. White Hat has decided to make his presence felt in this game. Looked like a Weaver defender may have grazed the punter on that one. Rough in the past. I'm going to go ahead and claim that uh, it's far enough away from, from my field of vision to make an accurate <laughs> call on that one. But uh, perhaps number 85 for American Fork is in the drama club as well. <laughs> and... Penalty yeah, is just, declined. Yeah. That's just a five-yard penalty, the five-yard version of that one. Would have been a re-kick. You have such good coverage if you're American Fork. It does make sense to decline the penalty. Nevertheless, Weaver takes over at the 50-yard line. Not bad field position from the Weaver Warriors here, but there's two minutes and five seconds left to play in this third quarter. It's a 35-22 to lead from the Cavemen. And we'll see what the Weaver Warriors can do after going down and scoring a touchdown on their last drive. Yeah, under center to start things off. Aiden Carter takes a snap, and he's going to play it to Austin Gussie. He's going to get about a three- to four-yard pickup on that one. Yeah, I've seen a lot of Gussie here in the second half trying to wear down that American Fork front, and we're seeing – Every single time, just a little bit more, just another chunk of, of three to four yards. You know, every single time you can go from three to four to five, that eventually leads to a big play breaking, just slowly wearing down this American Fork defense, trying to get back into it. Second and seven coming up for the Warriors. It's going to be a ball on their 47, or excuse me, on the Caveman 47 yard line. They're past the midway point. Carter lining up in the shotgun. He's going to take the snap. He's going to hand it off to Gussie again, but he's going to be stuffed behind the line. That's going to be a tackle for a loss there on second down. And you can just see the strength of Hunter Clegg, the strength, the speed, the agility as he wraps Gussie down. He's one of the few defenders out on the field who can bring him down by himself. It was a great job by Weaver. They had space. Clegg just closed off that space, and with 58 seconds left here in the third quarter, uh, you have to try and get this conversion if you're Weber. You want to get a first down here on third and long. The clock is running. It's counting down. We've just crossed the 45-second mark. Third and seven on the 47-yard line. 
The ball is snapped. Carter's rolling out to his left. He's looking to throw. He, oh, and it's almost intercepted, but it's going to go incomplete, and it's going to bring up fourth down for the Warriors. Yeah, Carter was like me at a buffet where his eyes were bigger than his stomach, trying to go for the deep ball there. Had one underneath that he probably could have gone to and maybe picked up the first down. Goes for the big shot. Great job by the wide receiver to break up the pass as it's a little bit high, and he was falling down on the play. But here, we're, we'll see what Weaver does. With 31 seconds left in the clock, stop. Fourth, and it looks like about seven yards. It looks like Weaver may go for it here. The Weaver Warriors offense, they're going to go for it on fourth down. Looks like Gussie lined up in the backfield again. Carter takes the snap, and he's going to run. He's going to run out to his left, but he's going to be brought down, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. The caveman got the ball again. Pressure coming from that very good D-line. Turnover on downs. Yeah, and it's a great call by the American Fork coaching staff there. All game long, we've seen Hunter Clegg coming from the offense's right side. They flip him over to the left side there. Carter not, not able to avoid the rush as he's so conditioned to stepping up. And, and it's just when it's coming at you from different angles like that, it's just so hard to avoid it. And now Weber, tough task ahead of them defensively. As American Fork, you have to think that they're going to come out with some energy trying to rectify what they did earlier. 30 seconds left to play here in this third quarter. The Cayman lead 35 to 22. It's going to be a run from Champion Edwards. He's going to be brought down after about a four-yard gain. And you can see how talented Champion Edwards is and what a great runner he is. Weber had him essentially wrapped up in the backfield, and he's able to turn a loss with the misdirection into about a four-yard gain as the clock winds down to the end of the third quarter here. That is going to bring us to the end. Two seconds left, one second left, and there it is. Three quarters have been played here at Weber High School. The Cavemen lead 35-22. We're going to take a step away, and we'll be back with the fourth and final quarter. We'll see if the Weber Warriors can close that gap and make a game out of this one. More on KSL Sports Rewind when we return. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Test day's test day. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Welcome back into Weber High, where there has just been an interception and the ball is going the other way. Yeah, it's another great play by Dawson Fenn, as we saw previously in the third quarter. Had the deflection there when American Fork was backed up against their own end zone. Makes the big play here, and now Weber has the ball back at the start here of the fourth quarter with 11.55, down 13 points. This is a big opportunity for them to try and make up that, that deficit. Big interception coming out into the to start off the fourth quarter. It's going to be a Weber Warrior ball here on the 45-yard line. Big play. And it looks like that is Gussie again with the run, and he looks like he got about two yards on that run. Or excuse me, that was Swain. Yeah, Nikosi Swain. Swain going with the change up here, like we said. Gussie in the third, Swain in the fourth, trying to get a tired American Fork defense to chase a, a very shifty, quick running back. Teams weren't all, all set up and ready to go there, and you see that Swain's still able to get some positive yards amidst the chaos. Small little run puts them at second and eight on the 47-yard line. 
Carter takes the snap. He's going to hand it off to Swain, but then Swain's going to be brought down for a big loss here on second down. Yeah, great job by the defensive front there from American Fork. I, listen, folks, if you're listening on the radio and you think I'm going to call Hunter Clegg's name, you're right. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, he's been everywhere tonight, and you can see why the four-star from American Fork was so highly recruited by Stanford. Uh, he's an aggressive defender, and he does a great job of really anchoring this American Fork defense. Also helped out there on the tackle, I believe, by number 23, Tyson Agut. Tyson Eggett. Carter takes the snap. He's rolling out to his right. The pressure's there, and he's going to be sacked. Yeah, again, you see uh, Waki Fuli, Fuli Longi finishing that one up, but it was, again, Hunter Clegg who tripped Carter up so that he wasn't able to avoid the American Fork defenders, and that is a very strong three and out. And if you're the Weaver offense, that's rougher than a pine cone toilet seat there, Alex. <laughs> a play... A drive that was started by an interception. A big opportunity for Weaver to capitalize and close this gap. But instead, they are now looking at a fourth and 19 on the 36. They're going to have to punt it away and give it back to the cavemen. And that's going to be, it looks like, number six, Peyton Rees with a nice little return there. Yeah, it takes a really, I guess, aggressive play. I would maybe even call it risky if I were a special teams coordinator for American Fork, but grabs the punt away from Jace Jones, not Jace's best effort. I think I might have jinxed him a little bit with my love for him. I'm sorry, Jace, put that one on me. Uh, but American Fork able to get some pretty decent field position as that return takes them back up to the 40, 44 yard line for the cavemen. It's gonna be the American Fork offense We're coming out again. It's gonna be Lincoln Jackson. The junior quarterback coming out to lead this team. He's looking deep. He's looking for number 14. That's Jet Nelson. And he gets, or excuse me, that's 14. Yeah, that was 14 Jet Nelson out Jet there. Jet Nelson getting the big reception. Easy to get that confused with the Jace Hole, who has made so many receptions. But Jet standing six foot five out there, been waiting for him to get a catch all game. Very talented player. You can see the depth on this American Fork wide receiving core. First and ten coming up from the 39 yard line. Lincoln Jackson hands it off to. Is that Dax Watts? What a big play there. He breaks a couple tackles, and he was still going, and he's finally brought down past the 35-yard line. Well, remnants of the old Doug Johnson muscle hamster run where he's just bouncing off defenders. And it looks like it. that may have been... Uh, Jacob Eardley, number 28, Jacob Eardley with that big run, that big play, breaking the tackles, and it's going to be first and 10 coming up from the 24-yard line. Lincoln Jackson looking to throw. The pressure was there, but that one's going to be into the hands and then incomplete. It's going to be second and ten. Yeah, looking for his tight end, Andrus, on that one. Facing some heavy pressure from Weber. Takes the blow. Andrus not able to get both feet in bounds as he's right there on the sideline on the out route. Ball on the 24-yard line. Jackson takes the snap. He hands it off, and this time it is Dax Watts, and he gets a nice little push there. He's still up. Probably about a six-yard gain there, and it's going to be third down coming up for the Cavemen. Yeah, one of those rare times where a running back probably didn't want the early whistle as it looked like they started to have a little bit of push afterwards. But Watts just right up the middle, and you can see the, the size of this American Fork offensive line allowing those running backs to get downhill and hit those creases hard. Creeping up to the eight minute mark, we are at 8.30 played here in the fourth quarter, trying to get the Weaver Warrior defense to jump. But I think they may have just caught themselves and it might be a false start coming on for the cavemen. Nope, it is gonna be on the defense. Encroachment against the Warriors. It's going to bring up first down for the Cavemen. First and 10 coming up from inside the 20. 
in the red zone. He's looking for... Looks like Andrus, the tight end there on the reception, able to hold on to the football. That's a killer completion for American Fork and a real stake in the heart for Weaver as they're now inside the five-yard line. Eight minutes left here in the fourth quarter, and American Fork is close and smelling that end zone. First and goal coming up earlier when it was first and goal, or earlier when they were this close, we saw Lincoln Jackson just run it up the middle into the end zone. We'll see what the cavemen have up their sleeves on this drive, but it's going to be a false start prior to the snap, and it's going to come back a bit for the cavemen. Yeah, again, mental, mental errors are huge in these situations. You've got the momentum. You're on the five-yard line. Having a false start at that point, just not something that you can compete with as you go into region play if you're American Ford. Lincoln looking for Roberts. He's going to overthrow it, though, and that's going to be incomplete. Yeah, the play action there, Robert or, uh, Jackson just trying to throw the, uh, the fade to the corner. Roberts with the athleticism, but the ball just way outside of his reach. Again, not a guy that we have called his name too much in this one. He was a guy that we expected to call a lot, but he's had a quiet night, Trey Roberts. Yeah, good job by the Weaver secondary to keep him in check so far. Jackson takes the snap, and it's going to be a flag prior to the snap. A lot of movement up front. You're seeing Weaver trying to do the same thing, sending pressure from a variety of angles and the American Fork offensive front not able to hold their water, and it's another false start penalty. Now they're outside of the 10-yard line, and we're still goal to go here as it's 7.35 left in the fourth quarter, and now American Fork is trying to put the ball in second down and, and, and goal to go, as I said, from the 14-yard line. Check that, 13-yard line. Second and long coming up for the Cavemen. Pressure coming. He finds number 35, Segura, and Segura is going to take it in. That's going to be a caveman touchdown. Well, it's a great call here by the American Fork offensive coordinator as he anticipates the pressure from Weber, calls the little screen play. Segura, once he gets out in the flat, he's an absolute load to handle, lowers the shoulder, drives over the Weber defender, and it's another touchdown for American Fork. Lucas Segura finds the end zone. It's now 41-22 for the Cavemen, and it looks like they are going to go for it. They're looking for two points on this one. Jackson takes a snap. The flag is out. He gets it. That's Jace Hull converting, gets the two point, but we'll see what the refs call um, on that flag. It looks like this one might be going against American Fork here. Let's check. Illegal formation there on American Fork. They'll run it again. Great play execution there, trying to get the, hand, the ball into the hands of your playmaker, Chase Hull. But unfortunately, just not aligned properly. And again, these mental errors for American Fork, uh, making it more difficult, but it doesn't stop them. <laughs> they are still going for it after that flag, after that penalty. They are going to go for the two-point conversion still. Jackson takes the snap. He's looking for Aiden Cage just wide. It's going to be incomplete. No good on the two-point, but that will not stop the Cavemen from taking a 41-22 to point lead right. over the Warriors here. 7.29 left to play. Stick with us. We're going to take a step aside, and when we come back, we will have the conclusion of this fourth quarter here on KSL Sports Rewind. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Test days, test day. Deadlines a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Just complete an application on your phone or computer or stop. College wasn't built for me. 
It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Welcome back into Weber High, where the Cavemen have just taken a 41 to 22 lead over the Warriors. That ball is kicked. It's going to go into the end zone. It's going to be a touchback, and the Weber, or yes, the Weber Warriors offense will be coming out again to try to close that gap once more. Yeah, Weber will start out with the ball in their own 20-yard line, trying to sustain a drive at this point in time. Up until this point, had really great field position every single drive coming out here in the second half. But with 7.29 left in the fourth quarter, they have got to pick up some yards, and they've got to do it quickly. Aiden Cage coming back out, or excuse me, Aiden Carter coming back out to lead this Weber offense. Carter takes the snap. He's dropping back. He's looking to pass over the middle. That pass was intended for number 85. Fortunately, he's not on our roster. And Carter is down again. We're going to take a step aside here on KSL Sports Rewind. Stick with us for the conclusion of that fourth quarter. Live from Weber High. Test days, test day. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. And welcome back into Weaver High. It looks like Aiden Carter is come off. It's going to be Tice Abbott for coming out for the Weaver Warrior offense. He's going to lead this team with 7.20 left to play. That ball is going to be incomplete and it's going to bring up second down. Yeah, Abbott took one play earlier in the first half when uh, <coughs> Carter came out. And now we see Carter come back into the game as, you know, anytime there is an injury timeout. Just a refresher for those fans who maybe don't know. Maybe they're joining us for the first time. Uh, you do have to come out for a play, but Carter back in. He is a tough, tough kid. He's taken a lot of hits tonight, but still out there competing. You have to feel good about that if you're a Weber fan. Aiden Carter coming back out. He's going to line up in the shotgun. It's going to be Swain lined up in the backfield behind him. He's going to take that snap. Pressure coming. He steps up. He's rolling out to his left. He's trying to get rid of it. They're going to roll that incomplete. And Carter takes a big hit behind that play. Yeah, it was third and ten there. Not much Carter could do as he was doing everything he could to try and possibly avoid the rush. The fact that the ball falls incomplete is a big win for Weber. And at this point of every scenario that could have happened there, Great job by the American Fork defensive front. Again, we've seen them get pressure all night long, and they were able to get the ball and force the three and out there. Jace Jones back to punt away. Tice, or excuse me, Jace Hole back to receive. And Hole gets that one, and he's going to break away. He has a little bit of room, breaks a tackle, but then he's brought down, and the flag will come out behind that play. Yeah, that, come when, that flag coming from behind the play, have a sneaking suspicion it might be a hold there. But Jace Hole able to avoid the first uh, defender, the second defender, and then the third defender, create a little room for himself. He's a very nifty runner, a gifted punt returner. Uh, we'll see what the result of the penalty is, though. What a night Jace Hole is having. Number 11 wide receiver for the Cavemen. He's having a fantastic night. Yeah, it looks like it was a block in the back there on American Fork. So that'll back it up 10 yards to the 46-yard line. And with 6.57 to go here in the fourth quarter, you need a stop here if you're the Weaver defense. 
American Fork has not had nearly as much success here in the second half. We've seen some miscues on the offensive uh, front, you know, false starts, things like that. So you, you really, really need to, to make a stand here if you're Weber. Lincoln Jackson coming out for this drive. And that's going to be a pass to number six, Peyton Rees. It's going to be complete. And he's going to get about a six-yard gain on that one. Yeah, good gain there. Jackson able to stand in the pocket, has some time, able to deliver a good throw. And you can see with these American Fork quarterbacks, when they stand on platform and deliver, it's an accurate ball. It gets to the receiver. The receiver is able to reel it in easily and secure the catch. Positive yardage. Jackson takes the snap. He's going to hand it off to Eardley. Jacob Eardley, he has some room. What a big run. What a big play from Jason Eardley. And you can see Eardley burst through that hole. And as soon as he gets to the secondary, he's headhunting, trying to find Weber defenders to run over. Great run. Great job by the offensive line to open up that hole. And now all of a sudden, American Fork is in plus territory at the 26-yard line here in the fourth quarter with six minutes left to play. First and 10 on the 26, big run from Jacob Eardley. And the Cavemen with a score would probably put this one away. That's a pass out to Andrews and he's gonna be brought down after a decent gain. Yeah, and you can see the versatility of Andrews as he's lined up on the outside that play. He's lined up in line at the tight end, uh, you know, becoming more of a consistent target for Jackson as the game has gone on. And you're trying to move the ball at this point if you're American Fork, but also work that clock. Because the more opportunities that you can get that clock to wind down, the closer you get to that victory. And I don't, if, if I'm the American Fork coaching staff, I don't want to give this Weber team any opportunity to try and come back in this one. Control the football. Absolutely. Clock is running. Five, se five minutes, seven seconds left to play here in the fourth quarter. That's going to be Lincoln Jackson with a decent run. That's going to be enough for a first down. It's going to set him up inside the 10-yard line. And you can see Jackson, just a very nifty runner, able to follow his blocker, make the one cut, get the additional yards, pick up the first, yard, uh, first down, and into uh, deep into Weber territory now is its first and goal at the seven-yard line. First and goal from the seven-yard line. Lincoln Jackson with a big run, big gain, gets the first down. And they're going to try to put another one into the end zone. That one's handed off to Dax Watts. He gets about two yards on that pickup. Yeah, great job by the Weaver defense there to stand stout. We've seen Dax Watts all game have that forward momentum to limit him to just a yard or two pickup. That's a great job by this front. You're kind of seeing a lot of hands on hips right now. This is, these are those moments where these kids have been working out all summer to have the stamina to make the stand here. Both teams trying to dig in. American Fork trying to put this one away. Weber trying to stay in this one. Dax Watts. To, no, it's Jackson. He throws it out. That's going to be Andrews. And it's going to be another caveman touchdown. Just a beautiful play action play here. And you run Andrews in underneath. Jackson stands tall in the pocket, delivers. Andrus able to carry the rock across the cradle and into the end zone for the touchdown. Just a beautiful play, beautiful call. Great job by the American Fork offense there. Touchdown there from number 80, Josh Andrews, the junior tight end. And now it looks like the PAT team will be coming out to try to get the point after. That's going to be Noah Anderson. And it looks like it's going to be a timeout called here. We're going to take a step away prior to the PAT. We'll be back here more for more on KSL Sports Rewind. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Or if my kid had a fever. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. I want to take tests when I'm ready. I want to take courses on my time. 
and speed up when I know my stuff. I want a university that cares about me. Tests on your time. Welcome back in to Weber High. The PAT is good, and the cavemen have just taken a 48 to 22 lead over the Warriors. And the caveman put this one away. 354 left to play here in the fourth quarter. How about the performance from this American Fork offense tonight? Yeah, it's just been, you know, a perfect example of why this is one of those teams that makes Region 4 so difficult. Why this is a team that many people think can compete for the state championship at the 6A level. They exerted their will up front multiple times. You see the variety of weapons that they have. You know, everything from Jackson to Champion Edwards. We've seen great performances from Jace Hole. Uh, just a very impressive team effort. Tate Anderson with the kick here. Looks like it's gonna be Moa on the return. He gets up to, out to about the 30-yard line. Nice little return there from Celesi Moa. And this Weaver High offense will be taking the field again. Yeah, Moa slippery there on the return, able to sidestep a few American Fork defenders, but just not enough to get all the way to the end zone. He ends with a 30, you know, the ball back at the 30-yard line. This Weber offense will take over. Uh, want to see, at this point in time, if you're Weber, you just want to try and, and make some progress, right? You want to try and establish, um, you know, some consistency, some rhythm at this point in time. Limit the, uh, the wear and tear, so to speak, on Carter, your quarterback, as well. Looks like Aiden Carter will be coming out for this drive. 3.46 left on the clock. The Cavemen leave 48-22. Aiden Carter is going to try to lead his team down and try to get some points on the board before this one ends. Carter drops back to pass. He's looking for number five, Dawson Fenn. Excuse me, that's going to be number six, Crash Coggins with the reception. Second and five coming up for the Weber Warriors. Carter coming out in the shotgun. It looks like that's going to be Austin Gussie lining up in the backfield. Carter to throw. He finds his target. That's going to be a catch. And that's going to be a first down for the Warriors. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. You know, you've got some subs in for American Fork at this point in time. You understand that the game is more than likely out of reach. Get your starters out of there, especially some of those guys that you want to protect as you're going into the region season. Great job by Weaver to take advantage and convert for the first down. First down, first and 10 here for the Warriors. Ball on the 42-yard line. Carter takes the snap. He's dropping back. He's looking deep. And that was going to be intended for number 12, Tyson Chartier. But it's going to be incomplete, and it's going to come up as a second and 10 for the Warriors. And that's one that I bet Carter wishes he could have back. Just a few feet higher, and that one might have been six in the end zone. Suddenly, this game is flipped around. Unfortunately, the ball falls incomplete. And now, Weaver's facing second and 10 uh, here at the 42-yard line in the fourth quarter. Two minutes, 35 left to play in this one. Second and 10. What can the Warriors do here to try to put some points up on the board before this one is over? Carter drops back to pass. He's looking for number 13, Corbin Alvord. But that one's going to fall incomplete, and it's going to be third and 10 for the Warriors. Yeah, taking their time, huddling up here, making sure they get the play right. This is one that you really need to convert here. Uh, you're in four down territory at this point if you're Weber, so if you don't get the full conversion, that's okay. 
big opportunity for Aiden Carter and his offense. Carter drops back to pass. He's looking deep. And it's going to be incomplete. Looking for Salesi Moa. And it's going to be a fourth down coming up for the Warriors. Yeah, not able to get any yardage here. And so if you're Weber at this point in time, try and get flip the field a little bit with 224 left here in the fourth quarter. Uh, just tough, tough game tonight. Uh, tough to really control that American Fork front. You know, that defensive front, so impressive. And just even with the starters out, still having an impact on this game. The punt team is out. It looks like it's going to be Jace Jones back to punt. He gets it away. Jace Hole back to return. He gets it, and he's going to take it up. He's cutting back in. He's trying to pass the 25. He gets past the 25, and he's finally brought down about the 30, or behind the 30, but the flag is out. Yeah, it's... You know, it's you can't blame any of the American Fork players for not being able to keep up with Jace Hull on that one. Uh, I think I was even uh, a little distracted by how many cuts and, and missed tackles he created with that one. Uh, but, you know, just an exemplary effort from him tonight. Just a really fun player. Big night returning, big night receiving, and what a performance from Jace Hull tonight. What a performance from this American Fork team. 2.06 left to play here at Weber High. The Cavemen leave 48-22. Looks like we have offsetting penalties. And the Cavemen offense will be coming out again with two minutes and six seconds left on that clock. going to be Lincoln Jackson coming out to lead this offense on this drive. No, excuse me. It's going to be Champion Edwards. Number 10, Champion Edwards coming back out to lead the offense. Big gain. Nice little gain here on second down. It's going to bring out second and five from the 42-yard line. Yeah, and I, that's the benefit of the two-quarterback system that American Fork has chosen to go with you have both players having game experience. And so sending Champion Edwards out there, you're still confident in what, what he's able to do. Although with a minute 30, 30 left here in the fourth quarter, it looks like the big, big task is for him to put a knee down. The clock is rolling. He's coming out in the victory formation. Takes the knee, and the clock will run here. What a game. What a performance from this American Fork offense. A great performance defensively as well. And they're going to leave Weber High School tonight with a 48-22 to win. One minute left on the clock as time is rolling. Yeah, just an impressive performance from American Fork as they travel a reasonable distance up here to a Fun and exciting environment. One of the best views in the state, in my opinion, if not the western half of the country here at Weber and able to come out with a win. And he's going to take the knee again. The clock is just going to roll out. That is going to be it here from Weber High. Final score, 48 Cavemen, Warriors 22. And how about that American Fork team? Just an impressive performance like we talked about. You know, I kept pointing out mental error after mental error. And this team, resilient, tough, very talented, able to overcome it all. This is a good game for them. They're preparing to go into Region 4. It's going to be a tough, tough run through that very difficult region. This will be an opportunity for coaches to teach a lot, to, to get mentally tougher, to execute better. And if they can, this team has the talent to compete for state without a doubt. Absolutely. We talked about the top of the we talked about it at the top of the broadcast. I think the entire state will have their eyes on Region 4 as American Fork will take on Lone Peak, they'll take on Corner Canyon, and they will take on Sky Ridge. Those are easily 
top four teams in the state, and they're all going to go head-to-head -head here in region play. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of movement at the top as the season rolls on, as all these teams start competing against each other. Also want to recognize a very tough, gritty, competitive Weber team. This is not a matchup that they, you know, that they, they necessarily stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with with American Fork, but fought back, made it close, competitive there in the second half, just not quite enough to get the job done against American Fork. Yeah, I don't think the scoreline in this one really reflects the the way we were played because they did play a really good game. They were gritty, they fought hard, but unfortunately it, they're just going to fall a bit short tonight and walk out of here with a 22 to 48 loss. Yeah, and the good news for Weber is you know where the bar is now, right? The bar is set for you. You have all your region games in front of you. Playoffs are still an opportunity, but you know what you have to get to now if you want to compete with the top of the top of the state, so to speak. And like I said, just a, a really fun game. You know, our first time broadcasting together, had a great time with you, Alex. Uh, you know, sometimes these can be a little, <laughs> little nerve wracking for us as we're trying to feel each other Absolutely. out. Absolutely. But uh, a great game, a great contest. And I know people watching at home likely enjoyed this one as well. Everybody at home, thank you so much for watching. My name is Alex Napolis. Alongside of me is Brian Carter. We had a great time bringing you this wonderful game of the American Fork Cavemen taking on the Weber Warriors. The Cavemen will head back to Utah County with a 48-22 to lead, a 22 victory. And that's going to be it for us here on KSL Sports Rewind. We'll catch you next week. Everybody have a safe weekend, and everybody have a wonderful night.